Welcome back to another episode of Rock Talk. What's going on? We made it. Joseph, nice to meet you. Oh, bro. Where'd you come from? From Santa Monica. Oh, shit, it's not too far. Yeah. Yeesh. Oh my god, he's already waiting. I know. <laughs> you should have had like a turning chair where you like turn around <laughs> as in <laughs> expecting you. <laughs> Could you sing? You know, it's funny because uh, I, I might DJ. be getting casted in a musical soon. Shut the fuck up, dude. Shut the fuck up. You know, up. it's. Honestly, I kind of believe you. <laughs> you should believe me. It, like you do so much <clears throat> like random shit. When I when you first started telling me, and it's it's obviously not random shit. You like it. You enjoy your passion about it. But you were like, I'm a DJ. I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? You're a gym bro. Shut the fuck up and work out. That was my first thought. I didn't right. say that to you. I remember that. Um, I could see it in your face. Yeah, 100 percent. I was yeah. thinking that. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, we have uh, the one and only Joseph. Joseph. Joseph Bayan. Yeah. You yeah. feeling good? I'm feeling great. Um. So let's start this off by figuring out like where where'd you come from, man? Where did I come yeah, from? Yeah, I mean a lot of people probably know. Yeah. Well, but beyond that, beyond that, where did you get started when you were like, okay, I want to do social media shit, like why people are interested in you right now with the things you're doing? Uh obviously like the the acting stuff that you're doing, the DJ stuff that you're doing, the podcast stuff that you unsuccessfully did. Or successful. We're not going to call it not successful. It was okay, just sorry. A, a lack of uh, time and effort. I can relate from myself. Yeah, it's my fault. It's my. I, I take the blame. I could relate to that. I fucked this up. Do you realize how many times I've done this podcast? You yeah. did it a few times. You changed the name. Yes. So I actually did this podcast for. It was Culture Cast, no? Yeah, it was. I yeah. did it for like four years, on and off, and I couldn't. I couldn't get the rhythm because I was just like, "Fuck, dude, I'm." Uh, like all over the place making content doing this doing that and i imagine similar thing happened to you because i know you do so many different things yeah and obviously being, being a gym bro is like one of the biggest it's one of the most important things in life right 100 percent. is it is it still for you yeah so yeah take us back sure, to the sure, beginning back to your back to your first yeah. question of uh where where did i come from with all this it's um I guess, I guess it started in college when I really started getting into fitness and lifting. And uh, so backing up even further, yeah, uh, I was really overweight in high school, like really fat. And you were overweight. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like uh, I was like the chubby kid in my, in my crew. And um, yeah, it wasn't until I joined swim my sophomore year. And I only joined swim because I didn't make the soccer or basketball team. Cause I got cut because I was too chubby. Did you get actually get cut because you're too chubby or you just sucked? Well, I knew what it, I knew what it was. You know, I couldn't keep up with the other guys and like, sure. Maybe I, I sucked because I, I couldn't <laughs> run. I couldn't run long distances. So anyways, I joined swim cause there was no tryouts. Uh, and I'm like, God, gosh, damn it. Like I have to wear a speedo and I'm like, I'm like rolling here. Yeah. Um, is that what motivated you to like lose weight? hundred percent. I would like shred like crazy from swim. Yeah. It and swimming is honestly one of the best exercises period. hundred percent. And then I started, I started growing lats and my, sh my delts started growing. And then you're like, wait a second, and just was, from swimming. Yeah. So there was no weightlifting at that point. No, very little, but it was like that, the classic, like high school yeah. bro split, like just figuring it out. You didn't, you didn't get into working out early, like training. No, no I didn't re like really start hitting the gym until my junior year of college when what I, the fuck? yeah. So my junior year of college, which is what, four years ago. Yeah. Four and a half years ago. Um, yeah, that's when I really started hitting it. And, um, cause so I studied abroad my sophomore year of college and when I came back, I was chubby again. I was eating baguettes, croissants, and schnitzel yeah. every day of my life. <laughs> so much beer and wine. It was great. Wait, wait. Even at a younger age, or? Well, over there it's legal. I was nineteen. It's it's legal then, nineteen. In Europe? Oh, yeah, I didn't. Yeah. yeah, you can drink beer at sixteen. I think they should do that here, huh? 
I don't think people here can handle it. You're uh, why? Because <laughs> there's a bunch of idiots <laughs> out here. To be honest, no, dude. I, listen, that's what I. That's the answer that I was going towards. Because I feel the same. It's like they we we like I don't know we <laughs> we have like all these different rules and shit. And I know because I've been to Europe and Italy, you can like drink wine and like there's like no preservatives. And it's actually way better and shit. But um, yeah, I don't think we're ready for shit over here. Like we seem to have like, I don't know. It's dude. just a different culture because here it's like you drink to get drunk and like, you know, party and have fun and this and that where I most of the time in Europe, it's it's like a cultural thing. It's like, oh, we're going to share wine at dinner and like relax and you know, Let, it, let's tastes, just like, it tastes good. Let's just debauchery getting fucked up. Yes, I see. exactly. So, so, so I get back and then I'm like, I need a shred again. And like, I can't have this. I'm, I'm chubby again. So big body dysmorphia guy. And so I started lifting and, uh, and my pops, um, Arnold Schwarzenegger, if you don't know, yeah. uh, we were, we were getting there. And uh, so he gave me the bodybuilding encyclopedia. His. His bodybuilding encyclopedia. I got to say this before you continue this story. That was one of the first things that I read um, when I was like fucking 16 that I was like, oh, I love this. Oh, this yeah. Is one of the first things that I read. I read this shit. I remember I must have read this thing like nine fucking times front to back. This big ass book. And uh, yeah, it was it, it was amazing. And I did. But also, well, we'll talk about it later on. I'll let you finish your story. But he did so much fucking volume, dude. A lot of volume. <laughs> so that's why. So, th so, well, yeah, I'll get to that yeah, in a second. We'll so, so I go, so I, I open up the book and he's like, look, everything, every question that you have, it's right in here. So just do your research, study it. And if you have any extra questions, you can come to me whenever. I was like, great. Yeah. And then, but I took that to heart. And so I, I really just do dove in there and just like nonstop, just only bodybuilding encyclopedia. And then I got, cut again and and then that really started my addiction uh to the gym to the gym yeah yeah because it, it became totally part of my life like every day if i skip a day um i actually just saw a video that you you put out like about rest days and like i really do suffer from that like mental state when i skip a day i'm like i'm like going crazy or going backwards yeah yeah like I can, I can see it in my body, even though nothing happened. Yeah. But I'm like, oh, I can. Well, it's super common. I think the reason why people feel that way is obviously like if you're like a, a I guess in a sense of like an overachiever, if you become like hyper focused on your body being a certain way and like looking a certain way, then what happens is like during a literal rest day or like a few rest days, your body, your muscles tend to like not hold as much water because you're not you're not as active right so things will shrink you know like when you get a pump you're like damn i look amazing right, right. that like art it's not artificial but that temporary growth where you're like fuck let's get a fucking photo for ig and shit get a little yeah. video um it's it's temporary just like when you stop training for like a few days like your body's holding it's going to hold on to less water in the muscle you're not going to be as full so like people will see themselves in the mirror and be like oh i'm getting fucking small but it's not like it's not like your muscles just disappearing because you miss one day or a week. It's it, but it is a mental thing that fucks people up. I th I think it's more of just like, I don't know, like I yeah, mentally I just feel like I need to be active in some kind of way, like yeah, constantly, or else I. Feel do you like think I'm, everyone feels that way? I not think a lot of people do, but for me it's not it's not like oh I'm getting small. I don't care about oh that's getting small. I, for oh. me it's it's like I'm getting fat again. Like that scarred it scarred me, you know. Yeah. And so I, I'm constantly always worried about my body fat percentage and like um, I go on these like big. Well, what bothered you the most about being fat? Was it just because you couldn't run with the you know, um, sports or it was it was many things. Yeah, it was it was uh, it was the sports things like getting cut from my teams. And I knew it was my weight that was holding me back. It was um, the looks and uh, I personally put a pressure on myself to constantly have like a certain physique. Um, Do you think it was related to your dad? Yeah, totally. Yeah. In a way. Um, in Cause a I, way, I gotta ask, like it's, I couldn't imagine. I mean, bro, your dad is like the guy that most people train. They're like, Oh, I want to look like fucking Arnold. Like he's, he pretty right. much spawned like current day aesthetics and let's everyone try to look this way. And the whole internet makes content about this shit now. And like, I'm trying to imagine myself being that guy's son and trying to chase that 
Cause like, obviously genetically, and this is the funny thing about you is like, you're, you're like the most closely, like you look like the guy the most, like even, even physically, uh, it, it, as far as like his other kids. And I'm not going to talk about all that, but just it's, that'd be a lot of pressure for yeah. me. If I was, if I'm thinking like, if I'm that guy, especially if I was into it, I'd be like, yo, I, cause like also you want to be better. And it's like, how the fuck do you be better than that physically yeah i mean he's the goat so like <laughs> straight up <It's laughs> i mean non-biased like no he he's, is he's the goat so i mean dude you he like spawned the generation right you know, that is even current people are like oh aesthetics and it's like he's surpassed time even with the physique and people are still like that's that's the one so i'm like damn if i'm that guy's son and i have like this like slight body dysmorphia it's like fucking tough yeah straight up well i mean it's it's uh I wouldn't say it's like a huge pressure that everyone's put on me because yeah. no, like I, I could do whatever you want, whatever I want. Yeah, no, you and know? he's not like, yo, you have to be a bodybuilder. Yeah, obviously. no, no one's pushed me to be bodybuilding. My my dad's never said like, oh, you should be a bodybuilder. And that, like nothing like that. He's never even said you should get into movies or this is all like it all, all just came from me and my passion to do it. And uh, I'm not necessarily chasing my dad. Of course um, not. But the main thing is his physique like many other people his physique and what he's done with fitness is like a huge inspiration to me so yeah. so i take that and i'm like constantly pushing myself to kind of live up to that expectation cuz i i know he came from nothing yeah from he was he was an immigrant came from austria and you know so young with with no money yeah and and um so I'm constantly thinking like, oh, well, if he did it without all these things, you know, then I, yeah, I, I should be able to do it. Yeah. But this is a different sort of pressure, right? We're not even talking about physical body dysmorphia pressure. This is like your dad also did everything like he, he said he was a fucking immigrant. He came here. He became like the fucking governor. He's this fucking movie star. He's this number one right. bodybuilder. That like that alone, I'm trying to imagine like my father took his life when I was young. Right. I'm not right. making a comparison. I'm just saying like there's no expectation or there's no like, man, I want to be better. Or I want to be like or I want to be even close, whatever. It's just like I'm just trying to make my way in life, period. But I'm trying to picture myself in a situation where m my dad is like this guy that is insanely like like well versed and successful in so many areas. And then being being the son and being like, OK. I want to be, try to be better than that. It's like, how do you be better than that? And like, what does that do to you uh, and your ego? Like, does it ever fuck with you? Like, that, like it'd be um, hard. Or are you going to do it? I mean, I, listen, I don't doubt you because yeah. I think you're fucking amazing. You're a great fucking person. You, you got great fucking charisma. You're, you're super personable. You're funny as fuck. Like, you have all, and you, you do the acting stuff. You're, you're pursuing this stuff. And I, I just trying to imagine myself in that situation. I just wanted to, I wanted to talk to you about this specifically. Like being in the footsteps or like not necessarily in the same footsteps, but having to grow up like in that and, and being like, OK, how do you differentiate yourself and make what you're doing? Not obviously the same because it never will be. But how do you feel right in what you're doing and join it without being like, fuck, is it enough? You know what I'm saying? Right. And that, well, so that's that's always kind of been something that I've struggled with is is comparisons and and um you know figuring out my own path and and not trying to be in someone's shadow and and all these kind of different things but i think what i found for myself was that i need to accept who i am what what that is in relation to me what what my relationship with is with uh with my family and the main thing is that I'm not following anyone, yeah. you know, I'm following myself. I'm, I'm pushing myself. And as long as I'm putting 110% in, then nothing really matters, you know, and my, my family knows that everyone knows that. Um, and the, you know, friends, people that are in my corner, as long as I'm pushing myself, um, I don't have to worry about what everyone else is saying. Like, Oh, your, your physique is not good enough. It's, it's not like your dad's or your, your, your movies aren't this and that. Do um, people say that shit? Oh, yeah. Oh, my, my comments are ridiculous. But it's like, duh, bro, I'm a different person. <laughs> like, what are you well, saying? I'm like, and you're also not like, 
heavily pursuing bodybuilding. I mean, this dude, well, lit, yeah. Yeah, it's like different. It's People very still different. say that day just because you're his son. Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. All the time. That's that's pretty fucking. It's lame. okay though. So it, it it was it was definitely a mental block back in the day, like a well not back in the day, like a, two years ago. Yeah. But then there there was a point where it just kind of clicked for me, and I started understanding like. Actually, it wasn't it wasn't really an understanding. It was more of like a confidence level in myself where I gained a confidence in what I was doing and I started re like knowing what I wanted to do, um, finding my passions, finding what made me me and feeling comfortable with myself. Cause that was the main thing is like the confidence wasn't there at the time. And so that's when it would, it would kind of pick at me in the physique or overall, overall, just okay. like the confidence in myself. So once I started, once I, did my first film once I uh, got to a physique level that I was like comfortable with and like I was like really happy about um, once I, you know, DJed my first get, like actual club, once I did all these like l like l landmarks for myself, then I started getting a lot more confident in what I was doing and who I am. Yeah. And so that that really mentally changed the game for me because now I uh, once I got my realtor's license also and like sold my first home yeah. that was huge now I'm like you know I could care less what everyone's saying and, yeah. and more of just like yeah he's my pops and um but what about it yeah of course you know I mean the truth is man like whether or not you're fuck obviously not everyone's father's fucking Arnold Schwarzenegger right but whether or not that's the case or anything like you're always going to have negative shit in your life where people are going to like judge you or you have close friends are going to be like, oh, that's stupid. And it, it all comes down to like what you said is getting to that point where you're like, wait, what the fuck actually matters? Is it is it a comparison to someone else? Like that's never going to get you closer to what you want to do with your life. Right. And the person listening, same thing, like you're not going to get closer to your goals or your dreams by being like, Oh, this guy thinks is dumb and that guy thinks I'm stupid and that person says I'm not good enough. Like that's never going to get you anywhere closer to where you actually want to be despite everything. So it's like, yeah, no matter the circumstance, like obviously yours is like a, you know, a, a crazy difference where it's like, you know, people can, cause they have, cause everyone knows that person. So that they, once they know you and then they know that you're connected, they can draw comparisons. Right. So it's easier for them to be like, to make judgments, but doesn't matter like the truth is like whether that's the case or your fucking father's like whoever who's famous or whoever who's not it doesn't even matter it's just like in life you can't live your life and the things you can't go after the things you want to go after like looking around and being like yo you you think this is good am i good enough at this like that's not going to get you good enough at it it's not yeah. going to make you feel confident in yourself it's not going to make you better it, so it's also that you you pointed it out is that everyone uh it was also another realization that yeah, everyone. There's always going to be someone that talks bad. Period. No Especially matter the what. Internet shit. Man. You no. could you could win the Nobel Peace Prize and someone's going to talk shit about you for no apparent reason. It yeah. could just be a troll. And like the thing is not to take it to heart at all because yeah, one, you don't know these people, bro. Yeah. And two, it's like it's just noise, and it's just going to constantly happen. Yeah, so. I mean, dude, I've dealt with shit where like people people run their mouth. I, I it, ha, half the time someone talks shit about me, like out like in this industry or fitness bullshit. I, it's people that I never met will run their mouth about me, and they'll never yeah. have a real interaction. They'll run their mouth for like views or some bullshit, and it's like, dude, I don't even. And it's like, and not even that I never met. I don't even know. Right. I never even knew until someone's like, yo, did you see this person was talking about you? I'm like, what the fuck? Like this? What is? Who is where, that guy? Where is this coming <laughs> yeah. from? Right. And then you just, it's like. I, I just, you know, it's tough sometimes because you want to react or you want to like fight back and you realize like, what the fuck is the point? Because me, me like making it a more of a problem is like, number feeding one, giving, the fire. feeding the fire and giving someone what they want. And it's like beyond that, it's like, is that giving me any sort of actual push towards what I actually want? Right. Or am I just now diverting my attention to some shit that's like really minuscule in the long in the long run? You know, it's like me it, shifting my focus and being like, let me look at this because like that person came out of their way to like be out of pocket. And it's not going to do anything for me. So I think it's really important for people listening. You're going to have people in your life, no matter what it is, no matter what your goals are, whether you want to be a fucking DJ, an actor, all the shit that you're doing or anything that you want to do people in your life. And it sucks when it's like the closest people, like it'll be like close friends who will be like, Oh, that's stupid. Or like they'll change up when you, yo, I want to go do this. And then 
they won't be excited. You'll notice it and you'll be like, what the fuck? Like you're supposed to like hype me up. Yeah. So <laughs> you just, you just have to be like, fuck it and just keep going. Right. And, and you kind of identify those people or whatever. If you're on the internet, identify those trolls and just be like, it is what it is. And just keep moving forward. Well, you forget about it the next day. Yeah. Well, I, I do at least. Do you really? Well, when I see when I see comments and stuff, it's like, it's like, oh man. And then the next day I'm like, uh, like, I don't even remember. Yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah. So I want to talk about the DJ shit. How did you get into that? Because to me, when I heard about that and you, I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Do you remember? I remember. <laughs> well, I asked you, I was like, I was like, we should set up a DJ booth at zoo and we should throw yes. a party. Yeah. And like, it's like a lifters party and like, it'd be sick and just, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, and you were like, you were like, yeah, well, we want a real DJ. And I was like, what? <laughs> I think I was just trolling you, though. You were trolling. me. I was trolling. You. you were trolling me. But then you started flexing on me. And I was like, I was like, what do you mean? I was like, flexing like this. No, you were like, you, you were like, yeah, I can. I can call up. A call. No, I didn't say that. No. <laughs> no, I would never say that. <laughs> no, I would no. never say that. That's funny. No, fuck no. You. But um, <laughs> <laughs> go fuck yourself. Yeah, I would. I would. I know. Like. I would never say I could call ups and then name drop. I would never do that. No, I'm playing. I know, I know. Yo, will you let uh, Steve will do it? Know that we're gonna film that video uh, when he comes. Sorry, just name drop right there. What? You didn't catch that? <laughs> I was like, what? are you Yo, really doing it? <laughs> that's a joke. No, but did you know that Steve actually just got his shit canceled? What shit, dude? His fucking YouTube is wiped. Oh, really? His his whole YouTube, it's like off the platform. He can't even make an account. What did he do this time? I, I mean, I don't know if I could talk to it. I mean, it's just, it's just you broke some policy shit that oh, like okay. they were serious about. And then they like wiped his like legit. His, I mean, he's got like almost what? I, I feel like almost, every social media thing is like doing that now. To, like, like fucking like, shit up. Yeah. They're just like, why? Like, I didn't know that they could just wipe people now. Yeah. But I mean, it's like, I mean, you break policies. But what I what I was like, OK, it was on one of his channel, his biggest channel, which is like, I don't know, five million subscribers or some shit mm. or four, almost five. And they wipe it. Sorry, it's just changing the subject. We'll get back to it, but they wipe it, and then all his other channels are also gone. Like, they wiped all of his channels, and he can't even make an account right now. No way. Yeah. Like, if he went to go make an account, it'd be like, you can't. That's fucked up. So it's like, dude, what the fuck? That's crazy, because, like, his whole, like, his whole life, everything is kind of, like... Yeah, like, focused around that. Yeah, I know. he Like, and straight up focused around it. I mean, like, I know personally, because I know him. He, does, he just uses Instagram just because... But like it, YouTube is like his thing, and it's like you can't. You're not even on this. Like every video he ever posted on any of his channels is gone. That is wild. <laughs> so you Google him or you YouTube, and it's like there's no videos. They're just gone. Like his count, like Holy two accounts crap. gone, all videos gone. It's on just both the, on both of his accounts. I all, like one. no, everything is gone. That's wild. So you're. I'm thinking about this. I'm like, holy fuck, because like obviously he broke some policy shit, but then I'm like. But what about all like he does so much good shit too, and it's just to me it's like, where like, I where mean do you obviously draw the line, yeah. yeah, and obviously where do you draw the line and like, gone forever and can't make an account, right? It's just like what, like if someone fucked up, can they start over or is it just like now you're in prison now, like what? Yeah. The, you're in YouTube <laughs> you're prison, done. you're banned. You, YouTube prison, like perma banned is crazy. Permanently banned is insane. But anyways, um. Uh, let's get back to it. What were f I fucking DJing. lost? What? You were talking about DJing. DJing. Oh, DJing. Yeah. Oh, okay. So how did I get started? Yeah. When were you like, I want to be a fucking DJ? I think. No, no, it's not. I think. Okay. So what happened was in college. Paris um, Hilton. She inspired you. Yeah. Paris Hilton. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. She inspired sure. me. And now I'm. Oh, and DJ Polly. Polly D. He's killing it, actually. He, I know, I know. He's crushing. I know. Paris, I Hil to... Paris Hilton's crushing too. She's playing at all these festivals. I'm like, yo. I was trying to make a <laughs> joke out of it, but like, it's actually crazy how. I'm like, why? Oh, they sell mad tickets. But like, why? Just cause? I don't know. Do you think I could be a DJ? Hundred percent. Dude, that's crazy. <laughs> That'd be fucking dope. You gotta teach me. I'll teach you. I'm dead serious. It's, you know who, it's really fun. You know, it's funny. We're just, I didn't mean to talk about him again, but Steve wanted to be a DJ at one point. He was like dead serious. Like, I want to be a fucking DJ. Oh, he'd be a character on stage. It'd be hilarious. But anyway, sorry. So how do you get into DJ? How are you like, yo, I'm going to be a DJ? Well, the, I think that it all started in, uh, in college, like the end of my senior year when um, we were, you know, 
you have your fraternity parties and all that stuff. And like one of my one of my good friends, he was the DJ and like the only kid that knew how to DJ in the in the fraternity. And he would DJ all the parties and he would play the same. 50 songs every party and I got so sick and tired of it. I'm like, dude, you're your ass <laughs> like in the same sequence. Almost. I oh. knew exactly what song was going to come up when like every transition that was playing, I knew exactly what he was going to do and like how he was going to do it. I was like, bro, you got to like add some songs or like change it up a Make little bit. And he was like, he was like, well, why don't you do it? Like, why don't you become the DJ? He got all butthurt. And I was like, all right. But then by the time that I learned, it was like I had already graduated. And, yeah, I see. and so and then during COVID was when I like really got into it. Yeah, because I had all this free time. So you're doing like underground COVID parties. Is this like something is this what you're trying to tell us right now? <laughs> you're like doing underground. You know, it's funny because I um, I threw. I threw like a, a small gathering, let's say. On, I think I remember this on top of a mountain and it was sick. Like I had my, I had my car running and I plugged in the speakers and everything in my car. And like, it was, it was pretty epic. This is during COVID. He's like, he's like, <laughs> are you going to get in trouble for that? No, no, no um, dude. I kept my gym open during the whole thing. I don't go. Oh fuck. yeah. That's right. I was there every day. Yeah. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> I remember. And I also remember you were like, you were like, you couldn't go see your dad. Cause he was like, not, he was like not going out and shit, right? Because you said something about that, like during that time, you kept your distance. Well, yeah, every everyone was everyone was like, yeah, home locked up, and and so. But that's what I'm saying. Like yeah. I know you were you were training, and then you but you were very aware of like, okay, I'm not going to put myself in these situations because you were out training. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Right. I remember that. I just remember specifically having that conversation with you about it during that time and being like, "Well, I'm doing this," and then I was asking like what he what he thought of it. And he's like, well, just be safe. And then you also kept your distance from him just like to, you know, be fucking respectable and from other people. So you're not fucking. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't want to get anyone. Right. You were doing the right thing. Yeah. I, on the other hand, was just a fucking I was a bad person, apparently, because I kept that bitch open. Apparently the cops came <laughs> plenty of time. All the time. All the time. <laughs> so, a- yeah. So I, I kept I kept going with it. I kept learning, kept uh, listening to, to new music. And, um, you know, next thing. Next thing was uh, getting my first gig at a club in Santa Monica. What club? Uh, it's called Senator Jones. And it's like, it's like, um, it's really fun. I never heard of it. I mean, I'm not a big club guy. <laughs> it's, it's really fun, actually. And the, the thing is, is that um, it's, it's all like college kids. Okay. It's all, it was all like LMU kids and like a few Pepperdine people in there. And it was hilarious, but um, like for the music that I was playing at the time, which was all like just tech house, it was everyone was like going crazy. And I felt like the man and I fell in love with like playing for people like at clubs because of the hype, because everyone was just dancing. Like I loved getting everyone to dance and everyone to like move and get on the dance floor and like. um, Yeah, not going to lie, like there, there were like mad girls they were like, oh, my gosh, you're so good. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah, like, yeah, I'm pretty good. Right. <laughs> like I got hyped. It was it's <laughs> hype. So it was like going nuts. And um, and then I started to start ke- like kept playing shows. Um, I feel like DJs get a lot of pussy. You know, I really feel that I'm thinking about this. I'm like, if I was a DJ, because like it's the music and then they're dancing they're having fun. Maybe they're drinking a little bit. And depending on the music, maybe they're taking a little, you know, maybe taking like some Molly or so, I don't know. Whoa, that's what you would do? I'm just saying, like, depending on the music, that's what I, w- I would do. I'm going to go see your shows. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, you know, in that culture, the dance, electronic type music vibe shit. What I is think, that? You know, they're like the fucking robot and shit. <laughs> <laughs> when they're doing a the fucking robot, they're like, yo, fucking drink this water. He's like, what's in that water? Some stuff. And then they're like, oh, my God, crazy how I feel. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if that happens that, really? that much. Dude, I think yeah. that's super common. I, like, I feel people like go people, to people take care of the DJs. People people keep like, yeah. No, I'm not saying D, D, people aren't taking care. I'm just saying like, you know, people go to like things like that and they like to do extracurricular activities. Like raves and shit. People don't go to raves. They're like, oh, I want to go here sober. You know what I'm saying? Right. They go there and they're like, yo, what's up with that? 
yeah stuff that bradley martin sold me you know it's like right oh you know but i did it because i'm not actually that yeah drunk, you know what i'm saying but anyways do, do did you notice that your 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 p game went up when uh my p game you put getting the pussy like pussy power like you getting the love did it go like this when you were, were... next question <laughs> <laughs> do you have a girl right now i don't have a girl okay right okay now. solid still next question Yo, yeah. <laughs> yo, <laughs> you're low so key. funny. You're low so key. funny, <laughs> dude. I freaking miss hanging out with you. Um, low key, you've been having some. You know, well, it was just so <laughs> what are you gonna just, say? Just in your gym, you've been having some nutty, like some baddies come through the gym. Like at Zoo Culture, I'm like, yo, yeah. what is going on over there? And then I, don't I know, go, it's must be in the water. Something in the water. Bro, I went the other day and I was like, "This is fucking empty. What's going on?" It's, really? What time? It what was time? like three p.m. That oh, time. that's the worst time. Yeah, that's the worst. You gotta time. hit like, I would say like ten to like twelve, and then in the night times like four to like six. Oh, that's when they go. Yeah. Okay. Because like three p.m. every that's pretty much cleared out. I, I don't. Like, I don't mean I don't really hit I, hit on girls at the gym. Oh, that's cap, dude. Is it cap? I think so. You've never hit on a girl at the gym. I no, I've I have, but Is I it, think it's you were like, yo, my dad's Arnold. What's up? That's just the funniest. I'm mean, not saying. Fuck I'm God. just saying, like, it's imagine stupid. though. But imagine that line, dude. That's a like. You could actually say that. I go in there joking, like, yo, my dad's Arnold. It's like, no, he's not. But like, you could actually say that's funny in the gym, dude. That's sick. I guess. <laughs> I'm trolling Is that you. Sick? I'm trolling you. I'm I feel trolling. like that's so lame. But but. Uh, it's I mean actually that line would get you way more gym bros. Gym bros would be hyped. Hella gym bros. Holy fuck. If you're like, yo, my dad, they'd be like, what, dude? Show me. No way. Bullshit. Yeah. I mean, I know I was hyped. I was like, holy shit, that's cool as fuck. Just cause the guy's dope to me. But, you know, anyways. Girls. Girls. You don't have any. What? <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say it. No, no, I don't have any. <laughs> Do you really not? <laughs> no, I'm not. I don't have a girlfriend. Right Are you now. just doing it because you don't want to talk about it? What do you mean? Like, do you get girls though? Do uh, I get yeah, girls? Like, you have a roster, pretty much. Is what I'm asking, like, and how many are on the team? <laughs> I'm, this I'm is kidding, the most dude. I won't. Guy. I won't do that to you. I won't do that. But like, you're not comfortable with talking about it. Talking about what? Your roster that we talked about earlier off camera. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Next question. I'm totally, <laughs> by the way, I'm totally, if there's any girl watching this that failed defended, I'm kidding. He didn't actually do that off camera. Anyways, <laughs> let's talk about what kind of girls you do like though. All right. So what, what is your, do you have like a type? Is it, a, cause like you work out, she got to be a gym girl. Does she have to be a DJ? Maybe. Oh, I know the perfect girl for you. Oh my God. Oh Lord. Who? I know the perfect girl for you. I'm trying to get wifed. Are you really? Ah, uh, sometimes. Charlie so Jordan. Oh, she's great. Yeah, DJ. She works out on TikTok. I don't know if that's a thing that's important, but she's also on Instagram. Hey, what's going on here? No, I'm just, <laughs> just like, the matchmaking, I'm Bradley Martin I'm matchmaking. Trying, I'm trying to think about. No, I'm just saying, like, genuinely, if you're interested in a girl, like, what are some things that you look for? Does she have to be into the shit you're into? Like, what? She could no, not completely. I mean, fitness girls are fun. <laughs> um, yeah, they are. Yeah, yeah, they are. Yeah, I was fucking get raw, raw talk. <laughs> <Stupid>. <laughs> oh god. Um, yeah, fitness girls are great. Uh, I, I did think miss I you, think man. as long I gotta as interrupt they have you. Their, have... I got to interrupt you. Okay, I did miss ahead. you. I did miss you too. Yeah. See, we're we're, we're oh, rekindling right now. No, I really did miss you for real. You see, you see the twinkle in his eye right now. Yeah. Don't tear up, Brad. <laughs> I won't. That's normally at the end of the podcast. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. I'm super rude, time. dude. See, look how he's closing his shorts. He's like, I yeah, I gotta, I gotta like, <laughs> <laughs> I gotta cover. Hold on. They are professional, dude. Fucking professional, bro. All right. Serious. Okay, All right, girls. Ahead. Yeah. So tell us about it. All right. Um, okay. What are my options here? Just because I, I like all kinds of girls. Uh, do you girl, have girls are great. I, I love, I love girls. <laughs> <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Do you have a, do you have like a type? Is it like a gym girl? Is it like. Like, what's your ideal girl? Damn, okay, I have a type. Yeah. And I know exactly what it looks like, but I can't explain it. It's yeah. really hard to explain. Yeah. I can show you. Maybe you can explain it. Show me. Yes, show me. And I won't say who it is, but show me and I will explain it. 
because I'll probably do this very artfully. Okay. I'm actually an expert at um, explaining tithe, explaining uh, descriptive physical attributes. Yes, go ahead, show me the picture. What did you just say, Brad? I'm an expert at describing physical attributes of women. Right. Maybe you not. Just, maybe <coughs> maybe you should just say like you got like a you're good like vivid descriptions. Wait, what's going know? on here? Where's the? Right, we'll, we'll skip this one. Really? This one's great, dude. Okay. okay. This will be hilarious. Come on, show me the picture. <laughs> See, but I don't want to like I don't want to say something and then it it shortens my range. You know what I mean? Yeah, but but who gives a fuck? There's no range. It's just a con it's a bullshit conversation. I mean, you don't have to be like this is it and that's it and all the girls are like. Oh, he don't like me. I'm out. You know, it's not that that's not what is that? Like, you want to ask my type? Oh, yeah. What's your type? Like, give me an example. I need an example. Latinas. You love Latinas. Love them. Yeah. You, you light skin girls, Latinas. See, we have the same. We have a very similar type. There you go. I 100 percent. There's nothing wrong with that. Latinas are great. Ama incredible. Light skin girls. Great. Amazing. I'm really into Mediterranean girls like like that. Greek, like uh, Albanian, you know what I'm talking about? Like Turkish, like, like Turkish, yeah. It's Italian. Oh yeah, yeah. Fuck, dude. You spend a lot of time in in Europe, at all anymore? I was there this uh, earlier earlier this summer. Did you pull in Ibiza? Oh, what? Did you pull, dude? I love doing this, dude. It's <laughs> I, so funny. I hate that you do this. I'm sorry. I'll stop. I'll stop. I'll stop. <laughs> But like, you know, for the boys though, like, did you or for the boys? I mean, like you have to, bro. Like, I feel like you're fucking bullying. I, I was just trying to like get the answer. I mean, I don't do. Okay. We'll do this on a scale of one to 10. Yeah. How much do you pull on average? Not like how many, but like, Gosh, can, like, what are your numbers? Like, this is even worse than the, first <laughs> no, it's not. No, this is just like, are you, are you six? Like, what's your success rate? It's just a simple question. Pretty successful. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think it is? They're like, yo, they're like of dude. every girl that I've talked to, like, I don't know, in the last year. He's trying to catch up a lot. I'm like having numbers like pass my face right now. Yeah. Like, you know that meme with all yeah. the, fucking, the math with the numbers equations. So I carry the two. Um, yeah, it's pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> I love it, dude. God, you're so fucking funny. All right. All right. Fuck this shit. We'll talk about girls. You, you, I get it because I get a little uncomfortable when I talk. I'm going to get in trouble. I'm probably from what was just said. I'm probably. No, gonna get in trouble. we can cut that shit out. Don't worry. Cut a little bit out. Now nah, we'll leave that shit in. Fuck that. Uh, <laughs> save save gonna, it for me. Save it for later. There's nothing to be in trouble with. You know, you didn't say anything bad. Yeah, I know. You didn't. I just get I get nervous. Well, you here's where you would. <laughs> yeah, you do. Here's where you'd get fucked up, though. If the girl that you're talking to or talk or go, whatever, yeah, and she's she heard that you're like Latinas or light skin, she's not that. She's gonna be a little offended, or if she's not. He nah. literally said Albanian, Middle Eastern, Turkish, Turkish Italian. Well. So it's like literally everything. So that's true. That you were very like. You know, you know, I've been really into. Uh, actually, I don't know. <laughs> Just say it, dude. Don't be a pussy. You know, I've been really into uh, Filipina girls. Oh, that's a spin. I dig that. Yeah, like Asian girls, like I love them. I, I had a phase. It's great. I, I had a phase. Yeah, <laughs> been really into that lately. Damn. Yeah. I know a few for you. Really? I'm gonna hit up some. Oh my yeah. goodness. Yeah. Yeah. Some I think you'd actually really like. They're really cool. I'm always down to meet cool girls. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Dude, I fucking that's love a, you. That's a freaking you. real right there. I, I love you. I love you. So, okay. F fuck the girl talk. Okay. Let's move on. Acting. Let's talk about acting. Is this See, like, now we're getting into the real deal, the nitty yeah. gritty. I just want to fuck around for a little bit. Yeah. I, no, I, I your personality is great. Now, acting. Um, this shit, like how far are you in it? Because I know you, you had like some, some movie thing you talked to me about that you did. Or was it a TV show? It was a movie thing, right? Um... I don't remember what I talked to you about. But okay, that's fine. So how, have you done TVs, movie? What What do you do? What do so, you work on mostly? So far, I've done four films. Okay. Um, one came out already called The Chariot, which was with um, Adam Siegel, Thomas Mann. Uh, Vernon Davis was in there. Oh, dope. <clears throat> Great film. 
uh, and three more that are coming out soon that are all in post production. And with indie films, if you're trying to get into acting, indie films take forever because they're not with a big old studio. Not a huge budget. It's never. Yeah, they're they're usually not like a fifty million dollar budget. So yeah. there's no like real urgency to get it out besides the director and the producers that want to get it out. Yeah. Um, but then there's also timing and all this, <clears throat> all these other things that go into it. Anyways. Uh, yeah, that's that's my number one goal for for so far. So for indie films, your number one goal is to be an actor then. Yeah, I love it. I freaking, out of everything that you do. Yeah, it's my biggest passion. I, I'm in love with acting. I love reading scripts. I love my acting class. Um, I, I'm in acting class two times or no, like three or four times a week. Yeah. Um, and then especially if I have a, a scene or or a movie coming up, like I'm always training with my with my coach and all these kind of things. Um, and that's another thing with that, that with the fitness, like keeping my body constantly moving and like doing these new things. Like that's why you always see me doing random shit all the time. Like what's he doing riding a horse? Like, oh, well, I, you know, I get to ride a horse in the film. Like what film is it? Maybe so wait, I'll see. So wait. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Like constantly like building the craft yeah. and it's, it's my, that's like my art form. What do you enjoy most about it? Cause I'll be honest, I've done a few films, like not, not like big roles or anything, but like, bro, it's like the craziest waiting process ever. Like you just stand around and wait. Yeah. I think a lot of it was waiting. Yeah. It's, it's like you get there early. They're like, yo, I was talking to um, Brian Callen about this shit. You get there and you're like, yo, eight o'clock call time or six o'clock call time and you don't film till like 12. Like I just the way yeah, it's super I, annoying. I'd love to get more into it, but it's like, ah, fuck. I don't know, man. I got to eat and shit. Right. But then that's when that's when, uh, you know, the budgets get higher. You keep doing it and then you get like a trailer and you can chill in your trailer and all that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. But so it gets it gets better. It's just it's what do I love most about it? Yeah. Um, dude, actually actually getting into these characters that uh, they've been throwing at me, which, and it's, it hasn't been like what most people would think that they are is like, Oh, the big action guy, just like the big jock or like whatever. They've been throwing me some like good meaty, like monologues and, and really emotional stuff. That's, uh, that's allowed me to tap into different memories that I have different, things uh that i get to find out about myself and um the thing about acting is if you're a salesperson what are you selling you're selling your emotions that's that's what that's what we say is is actors sell their emotions for money essentially yeah so it's fun for me because um i get to constantly know where i am emotionally i get to be i'm super emotionally like um, is it intelligent, emotionally intelligent? Or aware, or aware, open. emotionally aware. Yeah. I'm o like, I always know what's going on in my brain. You think that affects like the rest of your life? Like I'm better or worse outside of acting. I think it's helped out a lot. Cause yeah. I, I, you know, I know what's going on when I'm talking to someone, how this person makes me feel. I'm always asking myself, how does this make me feel? How does, uh, you know, how does talking to so and so? How does this experience make me feel? And then I get to use that later on in a film. Yeah, you know. So it's like creating range. Yeah, kind of like so because that's the one thing. Like you know, you said earlier about like being this role. Like I know if I start getting into acting, be like make this guy like the fucking the the bruiser, the buff guy, right. the, the tough guy, right? Um, <coughs> excuse me, I'm a little sick. Um, or allergies, anyways. Are, like, cause there are some actors that they just kind of like make the same thing all the time. Right. Which in my opinion, like, I don't know if it's going to hurt people's feelings or not, but like the rock seems to like always play himself. Like he plays this and except I think in, I don't know if it was like fucking Moana or some shit. And he was like the fucking, the animated. But that was, that was him too. Yeah. Still like he, a lot of his, a lot of his stuff is, uh, I don't know. It's this, it's this, there's not a ton of range is what I'm saying. It seems like I'm not, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So as an actor, like, how do you think you get out of that? Cause a lot of you, like it's called typecasting, right? Which is like, this is the type of character you're going to be. And they just keep putting you that. How do you think you get out of that thing? Like, how do you think you get out of that? Do you have to like 
request different characters or yeah i mean it's it comes with like requesting different work it comes from taking a lower pay because because a lot of times um this is this is mostly assumption it's not it's not fact but i would i would assume that a lot of a lot of actors don't venture out into different roles because they're not getting paid enough to do it and it's it's risky you know it's hard to do something that you're not used to so <clears throat> matthew mcconaughey for example he was type amazing casted, actor he's one of my favorites yeah. for sure he was typecasted as the um the rom-com guy and he talks about that multiple times uh he was typecasted as the rom-com guy and he stopped working for what a few a few years until someone gave him a new role that wasn't the rom-com guy so he just he said no to still a bunch of shit basically. yeah yeah and then they they even offered him like mad money to play the rom-com guy again he he said no because he really wanted to break out of that typecast yeah and so <clears throat> there's obviously so many more details that went into that story that like i'm not going to explain but um yeah again it, it takes it takes just like saying no saying like. no taking the the smaller budget films so that you can show people like that you can do i that. can do that yeah, yeah i see so that's that's kind of what i've been doing lately because i i don't want to get typecasted i like i've been training for so for like five six years now uh you know constantly working on my craft and my acting craft to play these different roles and and then to just get stuck as like the guy that just beats everyone's ass is like you know it's yeah it's cool but you know it's Once like what, what's all this training for then you yeah. know like I, I i've i'm learning how to to work and be you know the sad guy the the weird guy the freaking you know i don't have to work that hard to be the weird guy but yeah me neither <laughs> i'm fucking weird as shit dude yeah, cool. we're all weird in our own way. But I'm really weird, though. Yeah, I know. What's, <laughs> fuck, fuck you, though. What's the weirdest thing about you? The weirdest thing about what do you me? Think the weirdest thing about you is. It's a, it's a, that's a tough question because I have it's like a such whole, a tough question. Oh, fuck it. Because some things can be normal to me and they're like super weird to someone else. But you it's know true. what? To be honest, I'm just a freaking sicko, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I, think we all, <laughs> I think we all are, though. Like, what? I think we're all fucking sickos, man. Straight yeah. up. Just a little bit, to a degree. I mean, dude, look at us. I think it's a spectrum. <laughs> right? She what, what are you no, saying? The what? fact that you guys are saying like a sicko like just makes it seem like you're into some like uh, Well, like, that's, I don't that's know. all no, see, that's, take it. See, that's where I'm like, yo, that's weird. You're <laughs> interpreting this in totally you're wrong a way. Sicko. You're the one who's like, I'm a sicko, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> See, there's Wait. you're a sicko, yeah, and, like, and we're we're sickos. Yeah, it's like you you yeah, took that. You guys are weird. Like, you guys are weird for that. No, you took it. You made it very strange. You made it sexual. We weren't talking uh, about I, that. What? You, I, I wasn't even know. making it in that sense. What are you, you saying? You sick fuck, Brad. Man. What are you talking you about? You literally made this. I definitely did not make it sexual I in any way, shape, or form. Might eat ass, but let's not. Do you Wait, eat ass? what? <laughs> Who cares? We're talking about sicko stuff. Do you eat ass? <laughs> Honestly, I'll. <laughs> Dude, I love fucking with you. I love fucking with you because like, I know I, I know you. Love I know, <laughs> I know how like you because <laughs> we film YouTube have stuff. With in, it. We film YouTube stuff in the past, and I know how like sometimes you got to be like politically correct. <laughs> and I try to say fucked up shit. I'm sorry. I apologize. I know, it's kind of it's kind of rude sometimes, but I fucking love you though, bro. I swear it's like, I got I swear it's like my heart's it's not negative. I'm thanks. Do bro. you have to be PC? Do you think you have to be more PC because your dad? Uh, <clears throat> hmm. Or do you just like to be? No, I don't. You, I don't really like to be. I don't give a fuck. I know you don't. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. that's you. I know. I'm a gentleman. Okay. Doesn't mean you're not a gentleman. It can't. You could. I could still be a gentleman and be like, fuck that shit. You that's know? Not yeah, that's true. Oh, is it not? Oh shit. I gotta re. I gotta reevaluate <laughs> that. <laughs> Are you sure? That's just like I don't know. Gentleman is like manners, proper, and stuff like that. And you're over here like, oh, fuck oh sorry, that, sorry. Blah, excuse blah, me. Excuse so me. it's like, yeah. There he goes. Fuck that shit. I think you're moving. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Fuck that sure. shit. Sure. Uh, wait, okay. pink. Oh wait, hold on. Fuck that shit. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, is there's this? a Celsius right here. Yeah, yeah, go for it. Oh, we're not advertising. No, this is a. We got paid for this. Oh, actually. Yeah, yeah. Holy shit, Mike. Yeah. Is there a cold one? Yeah, yeah. there's the cold ones are in there. Get up. Can you grab him a cold one, please? Um. 
I go like, I said, so, dude, how official I sound. I just like off camera. Could you get him a cold one? <laughs> dude, that's fucking sick. I'm pretty cool, huh? Yeah. You're pretty, you're pretty I'm, cool. I'm, you're pretty sick. I love fuck. You're definitely not cool for saying that. I'm pretty cool, huh? Bro, it's a joke. What the fuck? Get off my fucking podcast. Go fuck She's yourself, Natalie. Nuts. Yeah, dude. Jesus fucking made us sound like we're sickos because you're thinking about eating ass over there. We're just talking about something. We're talking about being like fucking sick, dude. You know? All right. Wait, can you do that hand move again? Fucking that was great. sick, bro. Dude, I was doing that a lot. So I just filmed in uh, in Hawaii. I love Hawaii. Bro. Hawaii is great. Holy I, shit. I love it. It's hard to work there. Did you get some pussy in Hawaii? I'm kidding. I'm not going to. Listen, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. Can I? I listen, it, I did that on purpose. I did it. On, <laughs> I had to right away, dude. Am I red? Slightly. Because people just want to know how much ass you get, dude. To be honest, they're like, how Do much? Do people actually want to know? I feel like I feel like dudes who watch my podcast want to know that. Why would they not want to know that? I want to know that. You want to know? I want to know. I mean, dude, you're like, you know, yeah, fucking sick. Great. You was like, <laughs> what do you think? What do I you just think? spilled all over myself because you're making me you're making me nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just asking, do, do the girls like the schnitzel? You know, it's like, what's good? You know, the schnitzels. Uh... <laughs> Schnitz, Dog. the schnitz. <laughs> I choked on that fucking <laughs> Celsius. You almost killed me, bro. I'm sorry. Okay. <clears throat> oh man. Hawaii. Hawaii. You were spending time in Hawaii. Yeah, you, just you filmed. Some. What was the movie? It's called Lava. It's, oh fuck! Uh, you like not trying to get burnt on lava? Was it like the? You remember the trend when everyone was like, "Don't touch the lava." Oh, the floor is lava. Yeah. The whole movie was about that. Uh, yeah. Sick. Dude. So it's like. Basically two and a half hours, maybe three hours of just the floor is lava and everyone goes, the whole city goes nuts. They put it on the intercom and everything. So stupid. What was it actually about? <clears throat> well, it's a thriller. It's like a vacation thriller. This girl, she goes to Hawaii um, to vacation with one of her girlfriends to get away from her cheating boyfriend. She, uh, her friend meets a guy over a little dating app. She meets me. Uh, no, I'm not the guy on the dating app, but she meets me and my crew. We're uh, professional free divers, and we go and show them the big island. You know what show I mean? Show the big island. The huh? big island. I fucking like that. So, long story short, we get into some. By the way, some, I never, uh, I never skip that part. Just so you. Never, never. I always watch. That's like the bread and butter for me. What the big island? No, like the beginning sequence. Yeah. You know when you're like, you know, I was like, I would normally skip that part. I don't skip it. You're one of the good ones. <laughs> oh, my God. This, this, you know what I'm talking about, right? I have no idea what you're talking about. Do you about. watch porn? Dude. <laughs> that's a porn question. You know, porn question. Not, that's yeah, occasionally. I stopped. You stopped? Yeah, you're bad, dude. Wow. What a I guy. should stop. No, I stopped like legit, I swear to God, like nine months ago now. So my, you, haven't, you haven't watched one thing? <clears throat> nope. In nine months? In nine months. That's pretty good. Yeah. So you're just like never down bad, never, never no. in your life. It, I just realized. I, I mean, I'm, I I joke a lot. I'm being super sarcastic and shit about stuff here, but mm -hmm. I I just got to the point where I was like, I think I was jerking it one day, and I was like, what the fuck am I doing, dude? Yeah. Like, what am I doing? Like, who am I? You know? It's the post nut clarity. Yeah, but I was like, but I wasn't. Even, I didn't even nut yet. I was just like, who am I? Like, I need to stop doing this. Like, well, this did you is, finish? <laughs> <laughs> of course you I did. finished. You can't not. Fi <laughs> well. Actually, I did also try that, like, fucking, fucking jerking off and not coming. I did that for, like, a month once. Have you ever tried that? Dude, listen to Is me. Is that a thing? <laughs> yeah, bro. Listen, let me tell you some shit. I became an expert at holding my nut. That means I was, it translated. No. Yes, dude. Like, it translated to sex. This sounds crazy. I sound a see, little crazy. See, this is what we're talking about. Sicko. Yeah, but, you're but I'm sick in the But head. I'm helping young men get better. You see what I'm saying? Is that how you're helping them? I him? swear I did this. I swear <laughs> I did this. I, I, I was like, you know what? I'm going to try this. Like to the point where you're going to come and then stop. Legit stop. And then literally shut the, like not watch the shit, close it, done. I did that for like, this was right before I stopped completely watching it. And I'm telling you right now that, that like control that I gained has sustained. I didn't mean to rhyme, but I did. Point is you can get some control from that. Don't, don't take my word for it. Maybe try it. If you have a hard time, this is what is I'm this, telling you. Is this the camera that's on me? That's the camera that's that, on you. What am I doing here? Dude. We're talking about we're, jerking off. What? We're talking about important things, man. Young men, this is important stuff. Guys have a hard time holding their nut. 
yeah, well, that dude, that sucks. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> what like, are you gonna do? Like, you could, this what I'm saying. You could do what I'm saying. No, and it then works. just just stop. Yeah, imagine that you're about to come. You're like, nope, stop. Pack it up, walk away, go on with your day. Do that shit. Well, for you like, might as well just. No, do you stop? It's it, you. It's fucking mental, bro. So you're sleeping with a girl. And you just stop, get up, and you're like, I'm done. I've, I've, oh, I'm talking about jerking off. I'm not talking about having sex. You just said that it's it's translated straight over to sex. Meaning it's, it's translated to my ability to last longer. Is what I'm saying. Oh. You see what I'm saying? The control. I'm not saying I'm just like, oh yeah, okay, now get out of here. No. It was like legit, like practice, what I'm saying, right. practice to like then translate into sex and being able to control that. Because a lot of guys have a hard time with that. It's a very real thing. Is this what you guys deal with every day? No, this is a special episode for you. See, I, it's been a while. I haven't, I, we haven't had these conversations in a while. Yeah, I feel like we, you needed them. If you guys don't know, Bradley's like one of my big brothers. And yes. this is like brother talk, okay? It is. <laughs> Look at you being PC right now. I love it, dude. I I love you, bro. I have to. <laughs> Thanks for saving us. Appreciate that, Doug. No, it's true. Okay, fuck all that nonsense. Um, let's get back to Hawaii. Okay. Okay. So you're in Hawaii. When you're on set and when you're doing this stuff and mm. you're like trying to act, do you ever be like, yo, fuck this shit, I want to go home and you don't want to do it? Do you ever feel like demotivated to like pursue yeah. that? Uh, to like pursue acting? No. No. But like in the middle of uh, of being on set, yeah, like when it it goes right into what you were saying about the waiting game and like you get to set 6 a.m. Uh, call time and it's like you're tired of shit because you were on set the night before till 12. Yeah. Um, and so you only had like four hours of sleep. You get to set at six and then they don't need you until, yeah, until like 12. So yeah. you're like, what did I just do? Like I could have slept in, I could have worked out, but you know, once you, once you do it a few times, like you, you realize like the importance of being there and being with the cast and, you know, especially myself, um, I don't want to be like ego guy, but I, I like to think that I'm a, I'm a pretty big presence, like, especially on set. Like I'm, I'm always talking with the cast. I'm always talking with director and this and that. So I'm a big presence. And, and if I'm gone or if I, I just decide to dip, you know, everyone else is going to like click out. So you're saying even beyond, that. even beyond like your role and what you're doing on the film, you're trying to be more involved in everything else. Yeah. Cause it, it built a relationship with my cast members. Um, so with this, with this lava film, I was, I was one of the leads. I was the number two. And so, so I have a relationship and it's an ensemble cast, which ensemble cast means that the whole cast is basically together the, throughout the whole film, which is even harder to film. Cause like you the have, Power Rangers. I'm sorry. It's yeah. just like the Power Rangers, bro. Yeah. I love fucking with you. So, so yeah, I, I have to build a friendship and like a relationship with all these guys and it yeah. gets better and better. And we start working together more and more and, and we get more and more comfortable with each other. Are you going to pursue? Is this like going to be like the thing you, you like want to be the best at? Is this the thing you're going to spend? hundred percent. I freaking love it. So you want to be like an A-list fucking actor? Yeah, that's dope. I don't care about like the fame and like being an A-lister. Like I just mean that. at that level. But I just want to do films the whole reason why I got into acting was because I was raised with my siblings on my mom's side. Uh, I was raised watching films. They showed me all the eighties movies, all the nineties movies. Like I, I watched like nightmare on Elm street at like five years old, which is nuts. Yeah. But all the classics and I just was so inspired by all these different actors and how they made me feel and how they made, you know, everyone feel in the theater. Uh, and I wanted to do that. I was like, man, I, I th and I, I think I can play that guy. Yeah. And so, so I started practicing and, and going to training, training with a coach and all this, all these different things. At and, what age? Uh, that wasn't not till college. Okay. Um, I think I was 19, 18 or 19 when I started, when I started training with my acting coach. And you're how old now, so everyone has a reference. 
24. I'm almost 25 for... Uh, Damn, you're almost over the hill, dude. I'm almost over the hill. Fuck. I'm almost a quarter. Wow. That's nuts. It's really tough. That's amazing, though. It's pretty crazy. No one thinks that I'm 24, too. Everyone, th- they think you're older? Yeah. I, I, most most people think that I'm... Uh, at, back to girls really quick. This is the... Okay, just for wor- record, you did it this time? I did it. I did it. It's my fault. But then we're going right back. Okay. It is one of the most annoying things when I am hitting it off with a girl and they, we're having great conversation and they're like, wait, how old are you? I'm like, oh, I'm 24. Oh, you're a baby. Wait, so you're talking to older girls then? Cause only oh yeah, older, I like, older. I like older girls. Okay. Fair. Yeah. Like 20, 26 to 32 is like, Damn. I don't know why I freaking love it. Yeah, it's crazy. Cause I feel like that swaps when you get older. Probably. Yeah. I'm into that right now. Yeah. That's okay. That's no, fine. Completely. It makes yeah. sense. I was the same thing. I think, I think when I was, yeah, when I was your age, I was dating a girl that was fucking 36. It's just no BS. You just like skip all the BS. Yeah. I mean, I just brought all the B- BS. Yeah. That's okay. Though. I fucked it all up. Cause then it's your fault. And it's like, uh, that's my fault. Yeah. It's tough. That's a tough one though. Cause then like the, the older ones typically expect, or want, or they have like different expectations than like the younger ones, right? So it's like you, you might end up in a situation where the girls like they want kids, they want something more serious, and then maybe you're not there. Yeah. And then it's like, for all yeah. the guys out there, it's all about honesty, being clear, what's going on, what are the expectations here? Yeah. When did you learn that? Because uh, that is true. Very Mar- true. March of this year. So how did you learn it? Because now it sounds significant. Because you're right. I think one of the biggest issues that kids, guys, people have when dating, it's like they come into something and, you know, let's say, if, let's say it's a guy who, like, he just wants some pussy, right? Right. But he makes a girl believe, like, he wants so much more. And, like, he – like, guys tend to do that. A, a lot of guys tend to, like – Like, like feed, the manipulation card? Yeah. Well, I don't even know if they're doing it intentionally, but they feed what they know the girl wants even right. though they just want some pussy, right? Yeah. But if you were more transparent, I just want people to, to get this, like, we're both – Guy, men and women, more transparent with what you're trying to find in a situation. I think your ability to have that and be successful, whether it's short term or long term, is much greater than like change, like fucking up the expectations because like you're basing it off of what you think they want, even though it's not really what you want. And then you kind of find yourself in like a fucking predicament eventually. Right. So what you learned that in March? Yeah, like around March. Um, I learned that just because. Um, there was, hold on. I'm trying to, I'm trying to word this right. <laughs> Go, <laughs> trying Mr. to be PC. PC. I know. The PC I again. love it. You're funny. Um, why do you do this? Cause like, is you do this? Cause like TMZ, cause like TMZ will make articles and shit about you. Is, oh, is, they'll get anything. Is that why you do it? Yeah. What if you're just like, fuck y'all suck my dick. And they just said it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't think I would do that. Anyways. Yeah. No, you wouldn't do that. Yeah. I respect, I respect you and I respect that. I'm just, well, I'm just thanks. playing devil's advocate here. Yeah. Well, uh, I, I think it came from, uh, I was, I was hanging out with this girl and, uh, we were hanging out for like a month or two or no, just, it was like just a month. And, um, it wasn't like we were hanging out every day or anything, but we would see each other like maybe once a week. And, uh, I really cared for this person. And I saw, there was a point where I saw that she was really getting into me and, um, and I could feel like maybe it was just my assumption and that could totally be true. But my assumption was that she wanted to take it the next step. So what's the next step then? That? The next step is like to date me, to, to be my, to for, be my yeah. girlfriend and like for me to be, to be like mutually exclusive and, and uh, you know, to, to just be together. Right. Um, but at the time I, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't ready for that. And so, um, the best, th- the, the best option, because I cared about what her feelings were. Um, I, I just, I felt like I should be honest with her and tell her like, look, this is not where I'm at. And, you know, I think it's just best if we part ways because I know for myself, this is where I'm at and I don't want to go any further than what we're doing here. And I can sense that you want to take it a step further and the more that we because she'll try to compromise 
you know? Yeah. She'll try to compromise. And if she tries to compromise and I say yes and I compromise with her, what do I mean by compromise? Like, oh, she says, oh, no, we can do what you want. Like, but really, she she w still wants that relationship. Yeah. And so I don't want to hurt her. And so I'd rather be honest and like it hurts for a little bit than keep leading this path or like keep leading this relationship to get stronger and stronger and then break it off for later on, for yeah a down the line yeah yeah just because you knew it, it wasn't it something. wasn't like a scarring situation or like it wasn't like a big thing it was it was just like a realization that i had and then and then it made me think of past relationships that i've had and i was like wow i should have i should have done this with these people yeah you know because it because it probably did it did it drag on more or you like yeah more because like you're yeah there's more like there, there becomes more animosity when it's like you know the the misunderstanding or like i want this and this person wants that and it's not fully explained yeah then the person gets further along and then then they have that like expectation of where it's gonna go then you pulled away or they pulled away and you're like what the fuck and then it's a little bit more remorseful yeah well people people fuck up because they they assume everything you know yeah. and so you have to really you have to assume that the other person has no idea what you're thinking about yes you know very fucking important yeah because and that that was the same thing i learned i learned that at the same time because she was like i you know i thought we were on the same page yeah and i wasn't but i think that the thing that's important about the thing you're saying and i people listening um like genuinely i believe that in cases like this your ability if you ever wanted to like come back and actually really explore that relationship is much greater if you do it this way which is a lot harder because it just naturally i think for men it's it's harder to like let go of stuff like that because your ego and all this shit and, and it's easier to like string it on even though you know it's not really what you want but it's like parts of it you want like maybe for the guy who's like yo i want some pussy so like i'm gonna try and string this on as far as i can right but like eventually you're going to break that relationship where it's like you're probably never going to be able to really come back to it versus like if you ever, if you were able to do it and like you know forfeit your ego a little bit and understand like hey this is just better for both of us not just me yeah that you could always come back to a situation and if it's possible right you can be like hey like i'm actually really open to this now like i'm open to trying this for real if you were able to do it in the right way you can't be like you can't string someone along and they get remorseful and regretful and then in a year, you're like, hey, I really want to try this. They're probably going to be like, fuck you, yeah. asshole. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I, I think a lot of people get that twisted. They don't They don't realize that because they're acting just off of ego and like what their ego wants and not like what makes the most sense for both people. And that's super common. I think like a lot right. of guys fuck that up. Yeah. I know I did. Straight up. I mean, the reason why I'm saying this is because like I know that I fucked this up in one of my past relationships. A very long relationship because I was like, you didn't, you didn't want to let you just kept trying. I just kept trying and kept trying knowing that it was like. You know, it was a fuck situation because of all the things that had happened. But I just kept like holding on to the point where now I can't I couldn't even have a conversation with that person. They'd be like, no, I don't even want to talk to you. I don't oh, want to really? see you. I don't want to talk to you. Yeah, for sure. They ate your relationship like that. And I was like, oh, yeah, like, you told me about this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's like, of course, like that person's like they're remorseful, they're like a little mm -hmm. bit like even though it's not like it's not affecting their everyday life. But of course, a person gonna be like, yeah, no, it's like I don't want to see you because because of how much was built up over that time. And it not being able to be what we kind of that person wanted it to be at one point when maybe it didn't align with what I wanted it to be. And then and then I'm like, OK with it. But then, you know what I'm saying? Bradley, so, the heartbreaker. Dude, guy. I broke my own heart in situation, but I also yeah. learned a lot, you know. So, yeah, that's that's the that's the way to learn. Yeah. Just took eight years. It's OK. <laughs> it's okay. Everyone, everyone learns at their own pace. Yeah, for sure. Fuck, dude. But I. I yeah. Anyways, I won't get into that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pulling to you right now. PC. Yeah, we'll get into that right now. So, uh, what was the <laughs> darkest? <laughs> tell, tell us more about this. Um, okay, so let, let's let's move past this. So, the DJ stuff, the acting stuff. What else are you really passionate about? Like, is there anything else that you're like actually besides? I, I know you do the real estate stuff, but are you like? Is it like a genuine passion? Yeah, I love it. It's um, it was the it was it was the first job that I got right out of college was um, interning at this real estate firm and and really just finding a mentor there because um, I've always been interested in real estate and like investing in real estate and figuring out what to do with with money and like you know it's it's just fun it's like it interests me so so found a found a mentor and then um, 
really enjoyed it. Uh, I, I decided to get my, my license and now I've, I've been, I've been working in real estate also, you know, on yeah. top of all the other things that I'm doing. So seems like a lot of shit. It's a lot. How do you balance it? Um, time blocking. A lot of cocaine. No, I'm, <laughs> none of that stuff. No, I know you don't do that. I'm totally fucking with you. <laughs> People listen you just guys, seriously. I, I, you are kind of like a younger brother to me. So I like, I, I fuck with you. I know you don't do cocaine. Like, you're so far from that. Sorry. I just want to make that known. Some people listen to this. I don't want them to think the otherwise because I know I film a thousand videos with Steve will do it and they're like drug dealer. People still come up to me to this day like, where's the drugs at? Like, oh, I see. I see it. In, like, whenever I comment on your post, there's always like one right under and I'm yeah. like, it's I'm like, so, where, where are the drugs? It's, that's like, a funny thing about the internet is that like things can be said and then just like people just run with it no matter what. And it's like, like, I think there's some people that actually believe I'm a drug dealer. I think so. No, like genuinely, like probably 50% of the people, but it's like not true, but it was a funny ass joke. There's a lot stuck. of very uneducated people out there. Yeah. In this world. Yeah. It's okay. We're all here to help each other. Yeah. But that's why I want to make this known. Cause we're, we're fucking PC over here. Um, yeah, I'm just fucking with you. you. I know you don't do cocaine. It's Molly that you fucking do <laughs> at the raves that you DJ dad. I'm, fucking, I'm, I'm kidding. I love you, bro. For real. You're a good dude. You are actually a Thanks, really dude. solid dude. I mean that one of the, like one of the few that I met that like, despite your circumstances, despite what you do, like despite your attention, you're a good fucking person. Like genuinely, Thanks, I, I, bro. I even Appreciate in relationship, it. I know we're joking earlier about girls, but even in relationship to girls, cause I've had conversations with you off camera and you're super fucking respectful and you're actually just a really fucking nice guy. Hopefully the girls that are watching will get to this part and not just be like, click out, fuck that guy when you said this shit earlier. You should, yeah, you should <laughs> put, put in, this the, uh, first. in the, yeah, <laughs> skip to minute, yeah. whatever. <laughs> no, because you are though, man. You are, genuinely. Thanks, man. Like, I, I know it's not just the PC, you're on camera trying to be PC because of your situation, or whatever, but you are actually like off camera, just this fucking solid guy. And I, and I appreciate that a lot about you. I want to make sure that I say that because it's important. Thanks, bro. So, because I know it really what it's means like. A lot. Yeah, no, no, I know what it's yeah. like when people talk shit about me, and then like they'll be like, they'll never say like the truth, you know? Right, it's right. Just like they just run with the bullshit because it's a funny joke, but it's all good. Um, do you have any questions for me? Being that I'm one of the top fitness gurus in the world, you know, next to Arnold. <laughs> <laughs> Are you uh, number two or? <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm number two. Some would say top some, ten. Top ten. Some, some would say I'm top. Top five, sorry, top two, and I'm not number two, you know, like Drake. Oh, yeah. So that means I'm number one. Your dad's number two. I should have known. <laughs> I, can't oh. even, I can't even take that seriously. Let me, <laughs> let me apologize for yeah. uh, greeting you. I actually wrote that encyclopedia. I knew there was yeah. some, something weird time. about the penmanship. I went back in time. I was like, here. I was like, Arnold, here. See, this is, a, again, another uh, translation of sicko. Yeah, I went back in time. I was like, take this. Give this to your son when he's 16 years of age. Oh, is that what you did? Yes. Were you 16 through, when you got it? Through Skynet, right? Exactly. Yo, this is perfect. Through Skynet. You're funny. Yeah. It was crazy, dude. And then, But instead and then, of John Connor, you were like, go find Joe Baena. Exactly. Yeah, that's... Exactly. And I carried a shotgun. It was you. It was me. Yeah, I also had a leather coat. Sunglasses. God, such a good movie. Oh, fuck. <laughs> God, such a good, such a good movie. Uh, no, but seriously though, I know you have questions for me. I'll, set, sets, reps. Yeah, I'll, I can get. Let's get into that. All right, let's get into that. Okay. You know, I honestly did have so many questions, and then Ask we veered off. Yeah, but you know, whatever. I, I'm gonna piss. We'll cut it, and then uh, get, have like three questions for me. Okay. You can fuck with me if you want to. I love that. Can I come in there with you? I gotta piss. Too. Yeah, I, my dick won't shake itself. You know. What movie was that? We'll shake each other. Yeah, well, my dick's not going to shake itself. That fucking, yeah. what, what, what was that? Pineapple Express? What movie was that? Who remembers that? I think you're just making this up. No, this is a, this isn't a movie. I swear it's in a movie. That comment, comment below what movie it is. There's a movie where the guy's like, yeah, my dick's not going to shake itself. And then he like. No. No? No. Google it. Someone Google it because it is a movie. I swear. I'm not just some fucking sicko. Come shake my dick up. <laughs> All right, guys, quick interruption. Another one of our sponsors, shout out Raycon. They make earbuds that have amazing quality, but they're just not as expensive as the rest of them, which is amazing. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I've lost like 100 pairs of headphones and I have to continually buy more and more pairs of headphones. So it's like, might as well buy these. Same kind of headphone, same sort of quality, if not better, and they're cheaper. That's a W. 
And they're dope. They last up to eight hours. How'd you know that? How'd you know that? Because I have a pair of my own. Oh, shit, I didn't know. Okay, so, so battery life's dope. Uh, so if you guys want to get them, go to buyraycon.com slash raw talk today. Get 50% off your order. Again, that's buyraycon.com slash raw talk to get 15% off. Buyraycon.com slash raw talk. So that's buyraycon.com slash raw talk. That's it. How much you weigh? Probably like three, maybe four. Shut the fuck up, you bitch. Yeah, maybe five. Stones? Three. Probably six. <laughs> actually, that might actually, I wonder like, hold on, what is your weight in stones? What is his weight in stones? Oh my God. Six stones in pounds. How much is a stone? Exactly. I don't know. Otherwise, I'd tell you the weight. I feel like it's like 50 something pounds. Six stones. Uh, oh, in pounds. I think a stone yeah, is. Yeah, no, no. 84 pounds. So you're like, you're like nine stones? Nine and a half. 100 and like, 120. Anyways, um, yeah, I wanted to ask you, I don't know if you had questions, but I wanted to ask you about um, cancel culture. Obviously, we're talking about the PC stuff and like joking about it, et cetera. But I feel like it's starting to come back around, like not cancel culture. I feel like the trend of cancel culture is starting to like, like cancel, cancel culture. It's like going away. Yeah. It's like cancel culture is getting kind of canceled because everything yeah, kind of got out of hand. And I, and I feel like, I feel like people are starting to like give less fucks. I feel like we, we have to kind of have to. Yeah. What do you think? Like, I guess in the acting world though, cause that's still a very, um, I don't know. How do you say like, sensitive yeah it's still a very it's sensitive a very world. sensitive space yeah super so i mean especially on set like again it's uh for anyone that's trying to get into acting like when you're on set or when you're when you're working on set it's it's a it's a weird space because you have to you do kind of have to be careful about what you're what you're saying what you're talking about you like you can't really get too deep into who you are like because anyone can interpret anything like in a weird way. Yeah. And then there's, there's cancel culture, but then there's also like me too stuff. And it's like, yeah, it's, it's a whole, it's a, like people are, it's just dangerous. It's just, you know, and, and again, anyone can take what you say and interpret it in like a very wrong way. Yeah. Like, okay, I'll give you a good example. Um, I did a podcast with uh, Duno, right? This, this, this comedian, Latino comedian. And uh, we were, just this clip that was going viral where I was like, yo, how, how have you dealt with your weight? Like, have you always dealt with being overweight? Right. Yeah. <clears throat> and, uh, what I meant was basically like, have you always dealt with being overweight? Literally? Like, have you always struggled with your weight is what I was trying to say. And I, he was answering, it was really funny. No, there was nothing wrong there, but I was reading comments where people were like, why would you ask him that? Like, what, why are you so concerned with his health? As if like I was asking a weird question, but it's like, you just took that context because the clip went viral out right. and was like, why would you say that? But my, my line of questioning had to do with like, when did he start getting into working out? Why is he working out? Why is it important to him? How, you know what I'm saying? But like people will took, cause the, the clip of me saying like, have you always struggled with your weight? Right. Which I think is a very reasonable fucking question to ask someone on a podcast. If we're going to get into talking about fitness. Yeah. And most people are not going to go and watch the whole video so they can get the context. Exactly. And then I, I, I'm, I'm like, I saw myself. I was like, I responded to like two comments. I was like, watch the whole podcast. And I realized like, wait, fuck this shit. People are just like, people just like cherry pick. And they're like, I just oh, want to be mad about this. I want to be mad about what someone did or like try and make it spin it and make it look like it's like a bad thing. It's like, yeah, we had so much fucking fun on that podcast. And it's just like, take like that little bit kind of taken out of context. Although there was so much positive support as well. I just think it's a thing that people do like in this, in like, especially this like cancel culture bullshit. Like people just pick stuff and want to be mad. And it's like, I just wonder where does it all come from? It's just people who just want to cause problems almost. Or like, where do you think it comes from? Like the whole, like, Oh, I need to make this person feel bad or look bad. Is it like, cause in my opinion, a lot of times it stems from like someone else's own insecurity or someone else is like, I just want, I'm having a bad day. So I want to make someone else have a bad day. I mean, I don't know. I think, I think that there are instances where people do get offended and people do feel sensitive towards certain subjects and certain questions. So, you know, I think other people, too many people take it into their own hands to prevent that. Um, instead of, you know, someone doing it themselves. 
Right. So and I think that's where that comes from is is people take it into into their own hands and feel like they're self-righteous because they're going to cancel you so that this person over here doesn't get offended. Yeah. You know what I mean? But the thing that's funny to me in that's in those circumstances is like I, I think about stuff like that. And I understand, obviously, if like if I'm outwardly saying something like blatantly disrespectful to someone, it's like fucked up. Right. Because I shouldn't do that with such a big platform. It's fucked up. Right. Yeah. You can make someone feel bad and potentially make everyone else who might identify similar to that person feel bad. Like it's not a good situation. The thing that fucks me up, though, is like when I think about these circumstances, obviously outwardly disrespecting someone is not cool. Right. But I, I, there's something about the Internet when people come and they jump on. They're like to they jump on. They're like, you know, little things like that where they're like, why would you say that? It's like, wait a sec. A, a part of me, too, is like even though you took something out of context, and try to spin it and make it like bad when it wasn't in my mind goes like, wait, does everyone else in the world just pretending like that? They're like these perfect fucking people. That's the thing with cancel culture that fucks me up is like I know so many people who make the worst kind of jokes and like they're laughing about this shit and it's funny and then all but all of a sudden like those same people would be like if it was said on the internet oh my god i can't believe you would say that it's like shut the fuck up man i i like yeah and 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 beyond that is like just the person who's acting like i'm holier than you like i it's like as if your life's perfect and you treat everyone perfect it's like that's the thing it's that's self righteous thing that's the thing that bothers me the most is like that i'm going to shoot at you for some shit like even even social media and drama like i'll see i'll see kids talk shit about other kids and be like Oh, this person has success because of blah blah blah. Or also, this person fucked this person for these reasons, and then like on the internet on social media itself, and then like try to sell that someone something through like the fucking views that they get on that oh, video I get talking bad about it something. all the time. And it's just like a, it's just a weird fucking thing where it's like I don't know, man. I just think there's a lot of fuck shit going on, period, on the internet. But like this whole like trying to make other people feel bad about things that they're doing when it's like, dude, is your life fucking perfect? Like, are you doing everything exactly right? And that's yeah. that's the thing that fucks me well, up. Talking about making people feel like shit and and kind of making other people just like, yeah, feel like shit. Do you enjoy like squatting these girls and like making all the other guys feel like shit in the gym or <sighs> honestly, I'm, I'm over at this point, I think. I think you're you see yeah. it. You look I, I've been watching your videos and I'm over it. I've done I can it. I can see the the sadness in, with, <laughs> inside of you. I've done it too many times, man. I think you're it's not done. enough girls, you know? Yeah. No, it's fun. It's fun. Yeah, I like I like making uh, people like you feel like you know, insecure. Yeah, yeah. Like I can't do that. Yeah. They they probably won't let me do that. <laughs> you probably won't let you do that. You could do that, couldn't you though? Could I do that? You could. They would let you do it. Really? Yeah. Are you talking about they as in the girls or they as in like the community? No, you know? the girls. Oh yeah, they let you do it for sure. No. Don't act like you haven't done that already, because you haven't filmed it. You fuck. Because you're like I can't film this, but like yeah, but like what's up? Come on. Don't Bro, play with don't me. Don't sell me out like that. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I know. I haven't done that. Oh, yeah? Like, Shit. I haven't seen you. I've got... Listen, dude. I got blackmail footage of you in the gym doing that, okay? Wow. You want to have to cut that out. We should... You should take me to the gym one day and show me how to do all this. Dude, you, you know how to spot do me? Bro, you should spot me doing that. I'm down. We'll get you some girls. I'll line the girls up for you. Yeah, too. I don't have any girls. That's lie. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Do you really not have girls? <laughs> We're going to talk about this again. Oh, okay. Let's skip that. Okay. <laughs> Dude. I love uh, You're like me on this stuff. On this subject. I don't like talking about it either. Yeah. No. <laughs> Dude. Oh my God. Okay. So, so beer. So back to fitness. <laughs> Dude, people will watch this and be like, these guys are on fucking drugs. What is wrong with them? What is wrong with it? We weren't talking about fitness, though. So you way. would consider yourself a fitness guy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't. Your fucking face, dude. You go fuck yourself. Yeah, dude, top two, and I'm not number two. What do you mean? Go ahead. No, ask me your fitness. No, you call question. yourself? No, nah, I just fuck around. Yeah, it's all right. Your dad's number one. We'll be fair. But ask me some uh, questions, because I know you went out there and pissed. Yeah, I was thinking about it. Did you piss in the pool? I feel like that's something you'd do. Yeah. Go, we got cameras. I would do I would do that, but not Check today. the cameras. It was the hot tub. Mm, that's cool. It's closer. Can I use the sauna later? Of course. <sighs> yeah, there's a cold tub and shit in the side. You can do that too. No way. Cold tub and like a little hot tub. You can go back and forth. Recovery. That's pretty good. Yeah. We're getting in there. So Okay, say, ser seriously though. So burnout is a big thing for me. 
there's like in the, the gym. I, yeah, I get, I go through like little, like week or two week stints where like I'll just be like, dude, these workouts suck. I'm I'm burnt out. I'm tired of this diet thing. Like you're not getting a pump. I'm not just, getting a pump. Yeah. Yeah. Or like my sleeps, just like I don't know. How do you like what? How, do you just never? Oh, that's what it is. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, it's variation. No, no, you're not. I mean, I'm not, but like, I'm also like, regardless, it is also important to have variance. I've talked about this pl like plenty of times, actually, where it's like, you can't be a hundred percent all the time and you have to accept that. Right. So if you come to the gym, yeah, like you want to have more hardcore workouts, like harder workouts than not, but like every workout can't be that. It's not going to be that. Like typically speaking, if we're talking about like a, like even powerlifters, for example, like to get to the maximal level, like they're not just like lifted heavy every single time they go to the gym. They do like some sort of ramping up and then coming down, right? And ramp up and come down. Like wait, so what? What's like? What's your goal now? That's a good question. Um, as far as fitness, yeah. To be honest, I, over the last year, I've kind of flip flop. I was getting leaner, and then I was like, dude, do I want to get bigger again? I honestly you got really cut. I did. I did. And I took it serious for about four months where like I was like dieting hard as fuck, actually. Not hard where I was like unsustainably dieting, but I, I, cut did, out. I honestly didn't understand how you were in Miami and staying so ripped. Oh, I was just not I was not eating all the shit I wanted to eat. Like no I would, Komodo, no, no like, bullshit. Like just straight up like I was eating keto most of the day. You were taking like your Tupperware to the restaurant. No, or? no, no. I just know how to order really artfully. Actually. Yeah. I'm an expert at that, dude. Expert yeah, at eating out. What do you do? You it's, eat out? Yeah. It, well, when I, it's, so there's an art to eating out. Okay. You're yeah. such, okay. Jesus Christ, man. I'm the sicko. You what? are, you laughed when I said eat out. You fucking scumbag. I'm not laughing. Okay, you totally, you're fucking with me. If you guys are not on fucking YouTube. Watch no, this we're now. talking about Bradley eating out. Yeah. Anyways. Go ahead. PC. Eat out. Okay. So eating out, there's a skill. This is actually a skill to be able to go out and order food that like can kind of fit with whatever you're doing, right? And it's just about whenever you like, you could pick a food and you just have to dissect. You got to be able to talk to the waiter or waitress and say like, yo, can I have this like this? Not just ordering it as it is. Because normally as it is, it's going to be bullshit. Like let's say, for example, you're ordering like some sort of steak. Steak is like, oh, that's super healthy, right? But oftentimes steak is made with like a fuck ton of butter, a bunch of fucking extra bullshit. And if you right. just told someone like, hey, I want the steak. Just cook the steak. Like, don't cook it with. You have to just be more outwardly saying, "Hey, this is how I want my food." And typically, most ah. places will be like, "Okay," like they'll just cook a steak. And if you just cook a steak, that, that's like if you just cooked it at the house. Like, you don't cook it in the oil. Don't cook it in extra butter. Like all the other steaks that they're cooking, cook this one without the butter. And you're gonna be. You're gonna get what you want. And then if you ask for some rice, whatever. Like, the norm, most places will have something like that and say, "I just want it plain." So you just have to order specifically. See, this is game changing right here. No, it is. I swear to God, because obviously it's because I usually just make it easy and try to look for the healthiest thing on the menu. Yeah. No. But that ends up being like it's shit. still fuck because because yeah. they cook everything in oils or butters and all that bullshit. But here's the deal with people listening. It is more expensive. I'm not saying this is a cost effective way to do this because it's not. But that's just how. Yeah, it's the best way to do it. If I'm doing it. Yeah, I yeah. have to do it. If I'm taking it serious, I have to do it that way. And then oftentimes I'll find a place like when I'm in Miami, you ask, right? I'll find a place that's super consistent with like the food and I'll just like stick with that because I know that I feel good. I don't feel bloated like I, f I feel good from it because I'm yeah, not consistency super consistency is key. Yes. When sure. you're trying to lose weight or when you're trying to gain weight, when you're not just like you got to base it off. This is the thing that's important. You have to base it off how you feel. Right. right. If I mean some food, I'm like, okay, notice me like my stomach's bothered or like I feel bloated every like few hours every time after. And it's like, maybe that's not the food that I need to stick with. But if like I could eat something and feel like energized and good and like feeling, I don't feel extra, you know, water retention, then I'll stick with that and be like, okay, just keep like consistently eating the same thing. It's, it's boring, but it's like, if I really want what I'm focused on, then I don't give a fuck. I don't need to have all this variation and shit. Yeah. So it's about ordering specifically and strategically. So when you started your, when you started your like fitness influencer life, was that through YouTube? That was through no, this YouTube. This is a good question. So uh, yeah, I started Instagram literally <clears throat> early 2011. So Instagram started end of 2010 in October. Right. I started uh, like, I don't know, like two, three months after, like when it basically, I think it was like January 2000. Uh, 11. Yeah. <clears throat> and, uh, 
it just didn't like all this shit didn't exist. It wasn't like, oh, I'm going to be Bradley Martin and be a fitness influencer and do workout video. It didn't exist. Yeah, it was never like that. It wasn't a thing. Like at the time, there were some people who were like making money that I knew about on Twitter. Like there were some people, Elliot Hills was someone who was making money through fitness stuff like before, like Instagram, um, Dave Tate, but he owns like a fitness, com like a fitness manufacturing equipment company, like which I bought equipment from. Um, but no one was like influencing. They weren't like influencers and YouTube. I think, I think it was like 2000 must have been 13 that like it really like kind of fitness stuff like rich piano was one of the first guys that really blew up and like oh, took yeah. it different like took it serious um but long story short it <clears throat> i was never like oh man i'm gonna be a fitness influencer it wasn't a thing like there were there were not people doing fitness in like i'm gonna put it this way i was the, i remember being like one of the first people in the fitness industry to have 10,000 followers and like people i remember going to a show because i was competing at that time back in 2011 and like i, I remember walking by and you know when you go somewhere and someone's like, oh, that's so-and-so, right? Like, you could hear him? Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, I don't know, for you, maybe like, oh, it's Arnold's kid or some shit, right? Or let's show right. stuff or whatever the fuck, right? So now I hear like, oh, it's Bradley Martin, right? When I'm walking somewhere, like I went to like a fucking for carnival or some shit, or what is it called? Like a, 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 a fair. I went a to a fair. fair the other day. Like, yeah. oh, Brad, like, I hear this kind of shit. Can I get a photo? So I'm walking. I remember walking down in uh, L.A. and I was doing a show at that Culver City Auditorium. Mm. And I'm walking down like the, the aisle, it's like an auditorium with like chairs and someone goes, oh, that's a guy with 10,000 followers. Like that was how early on I was doing this shit. Damn. So meaning it wasn't a thing. I wasn't doing influencing. I was just posting shit that I thought was cool. I was never like, man, I'm gonna make money and be like that guy. Yeah, because like, it wasn't a thing yet. Yeah, I yeah. basically did it. Like I created that lane straight up like yeah for sure on instagram mainly and then when i got to about six hundred thousand followers which probably was in like i don't know this is so og shit like 2013 maybe that's when i started youtube so i started you so youtube came out so you started with instagram started with instagram and i was just like this was before videos this was before like every this just didn't exist how it is today so it was like back then you could post pictures and like most people posted pictures and they were like it, Cause they had like you swipe and you have these stupid ass frames that people would post on Facebook. So people were using Instagram when it first came out. Like I'm talking about Instagram when I was like, yo, follow me on Instagram. And that person had an Android and they're like, I can't even download that app. Like it's not even on. Yeah. Android. I remember that. Yeah. I remember and that. And most people were like, what the fuck is Instagram? So I'm in the gym being like, follow me on Instagram. I'm like what the fuck is this? No one used it. It wasn't like a thing that right. people were doing. And then, so I'm just posting pictures. And when I blew up on Instagram, it was because like, I was posting selfies like I had like good abs and like I guess still do. But like there was like, oh, I guess people oh. thought, oh, I mean, you know, <laughs> come on. Anyways, <laughs> I'm looking with you. But like it, there was like I had like aesthetic and then then they dropped videos. And I remember this like I remember the first video I ever did. I was like in my car being like, oh, Instagram has videos now. I'm just filming my face. But as soon as I started to film like my workouts, people were like, oh, fuck, this guy has abs and he's strong. And then it caught on and then I started doing like athletic shit and they're like, oh, he's strong and he's athletic. Like the first video that went super viral for me and got me like back in the day, Instagram was so different. I must have got like a hundred thousand followers when I posted this video because the explore page was like one explore page on the whole app. Now it's like based on people you follow, photos, like suggested bullshit, all this other stuff. Right. Right. Back right. in the day, if you had Instagram, everyone had the same, everyone explore. had the same like six slides of the explore page. So the explore page was like if you got on the explore page you were getting thousands of followers like every second. So I had one video that went viral, which was me jumping out of a pool, like a four, three and a half foot oh, yeah. pool. Yeah, I remember that. That went super viral. And I was getting like 10,000 followers like every 20 minutes. Like I was just getting fucking, cause you sit up there for 24 hours basically. And like, like I said, imagine it now, there was literally six versions of that page. And if you were on that, you were booming. Like your account was blowing the fuck up. Nowadays it doesn't happen. You know what I'm saying? Nowadays yeah. it's like, they hide all your shit damn near on Instagram. You're lucky if you get anyone outside of your fucking following to actually see your shit because the algorithm is so fucking wacky. But yeah, it's pretty nuts right now. But yeah, man, back in the day, I, I didn't like I wasn't like I'm going to be an influencer. Like a lot of people ask me this question. Like I didn't know I was just doing what I thought was cool. I was doing like what at the time my job was, was a personal well, that's trainer. That's a big difference between then and now because now it's like that's a big goal for people. Well, people do it now because they want to make money. Right. And then, and then that's when it gets skewed. Cause people go, I want to do what you're doing. And I love that. And I respect that. But a lot of people go, I want to do what you're doing. Like I want to make money. 
Right. right. And it's not they're not posting like what they love to do. Yeah, they're doing something because they want an effect without like like the real heart in it. Like right. I did it because that was just my life. Like I was a weirdo who trained and fell in love with training because like that's what I need to feel good about myself. And this was before the internet. Like I was the kind of I remember having this conversation with uh, Dawson Dietrich like the other day. Like um, I was the kind of person in the gym where back in the day in like 2010, 2009, people were like if you were that crazy about training, like how every kid nowadays is like filming and like they're training, they're trying to train hard, like posting shit on content and it's cool and everyone does it now. If you were that kid back in 2009, people were like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Not that you were filming anything because you didn't even film it shit for anything. But if you were like taking training serious, like people were like, yo, almost like, yo, you good, bro? Like, yeah, are you okay? Yeah. And, and I remember that because it's me and my buddies with like no cameras, nothing, have these workouts that like, we're just insane. We push it like be on the leg press and do like stupid reps where you're fucking shaking. And like, because I was so enamored by old school bodybuilding, like Ronnie Coleman and all that era that like you watching DVDs and shit to see this stuff. The old Jay Cutler, right. Arnold stuff where you're watching this and you're like, man, I want to be like that. I want to train hard like that. I want to, I want to like, you know, like the fucking you know, the videos, this motherfucker's like doing fucking the rows and he's like dying. Like that's the kind of shit that I saw and was like, I want to be like that. I didn't see social media cause it wasn't there. Yeah. So my, my, my like connection to it was much different. It was like, I want, like, that's what I want my life to be. And because I, I like the work ethic in it. Nowadays, kids are like, Oh, these kids make money doing this. I could work out and have, and I have abs. I can make money. Not like I really care about this thing. Wait. So what's your goal now? Okay. So my goal now, as far as fitness or as far as life, cause it's as kind far, of like blended as, mm, as far as fitness and then, and then life. Um, I mean, obviously I want to maintain a certain level of strength. I've always tried to maintain, like if I'm going in the gym, I'll do random shit. Like we'll film shit and then I'll just like someone else will be deadlifting like a bunch of weight and I'll be like, shit, if I can jump in and do it. I always want to be able to have like a good 700, 750 pound deadlift was always, like, I just want to keep that. Right. So I just do it all the time. But it's like, am I, it's easy for me at this point. And that's, and I just asked that because a lot of times people, make their goals based off of other people's physiques like like oh i saw sebum so i'm gonna i want to have sebum's body or like you yeah. know i see bradley i wanted to have Bradley. but like your your physique is like so one it's unique and like two like do you see yourself like like i like that guy's physique i want to have like Never. Similar to that or not anymore? Never. Like, did it ever used to be like that? Yeah, like, and early on, like I told you, it was, like, Arnold, Ronnie. Yeah. Like, so I, now I, it's just, like, maintaining? Or, like, yeah, what do you mean? Yeah, kind of. More like, I, there's so many other things that kind of take my time. And I know to be, and I've had this conversation before with people, but to be, like, really your best at, like, bodybuilding or powerlifting or, like, excelling at one of those sports, Olympic weightlifting, whatever it is, like, with physique involved, you have to dedicate all your time to that. Like to have the C-bump physique, right? Like if you want to be the best, obviously you can't have someone else's physique, number one. Let's make that clear. Yeah, everyone's but to, different. But to have your best physique, like to be at that level, that condition, your whole life has to, has to revolve around that. Are and you're going to compete again? No, nah, I don't think so, man. I don't think I have that. In, I, don't, I don't care as much. And I also, yeah. I never really like, I burnt out on that industry very early on because of the yeah, politicalness in it. And it was just kind of shady. Right. And it was like, it, it, it I remember it very clearly it became more about what you could do for them. It wasn't just about a physique. Like I remember it literally, I'll tell this story. I don't know if I've told the story ever specifically on the podcast, but I remember I lost at the USA's back in the day. Men's physique first came out. They only gave out one pro card. Now they, they gave out two, like at the next show and every other show after they gave out to the first two top two. Mm -hmm. But I was like the first USA's that they ever did in Vegas. And I got second. And I remember how bummed out I was. And everyone told me like, you should have won and they're like, you got robbed. And I heard that for like months on Facebook. That's when everyone was using Facebook. Yeah. And like, I'm reading all these messages like, yeah, I did get fucked. I'm looking at the pictures like, why didn't I win? And then I, heard, I remember talking to like the coach of the person who won and then being like, yeah, you didn't win. Like you should join my team. Cause like I'm connected with like the show promoter. And like, that's pretty much essentially why you lost is because my guy was my client and I brought these 15 clients to oh, this like show. That. Exactly. Like, see, I would never, I would so never know. Imagine that. I'm a trainer. And like I'm a coach and I have 15 clients and I'm bringing them to your show and you're a promoter and I'm giving you all this money from all these clients basically. Right. And then I say, Hey, I brought these 15, 30 people to your show. Look at my guy in that class. He should win essentially. And then like they're over there telling the people like, Oh, look at this person more. 
So that person's going to get more looks. This is a subjective sport. Do you sport. think it's still like that? Absolutely. 100%. I don't think it's as bad as it was back then. I think it's definitely changed a little bit. But See, I need to go to more bodybuilding shows. But, well, they would always rationalize. I remember be like, well, on the West Coast, we were looking for like a softer physique. And on the East Coast, they like a harder physique. And then it just, it was, they always had some excuse. They're like, well, talk yeah. to the judge and see, get there. It was just, it was just like, it was bullshit, man. And, and the truth be told, I just remember having that experience and not having followers. Let me give you perspective now, right? <clears throat> having that experience and like, Everyone being like, you sh yo, you had this. You should have won, hands down, right? Mm -hmm. The show before that, I, I won in San Diego, won first, won overall, blah, 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 whatever. And everyone's like, you should have had this easy. And then I remember having that experience and not having followers and then getting a bunch of followers and blowing up and being one of the first to blow up. And then people who own shows in Texas at the time, I'm not going to say the person's name, was like, come do my show. You're going to win. And he wanted me to come do his show because I'm going to go promote it. I'm going to talk about the fact that I'm doing the show. I'm going to Texas to do this guy's show drive traffic to the show right and i remember before i go out on stage i'm literally there's like imagine you walk out on stage right and like you're in the back and there's like the the curtains right and i'm walking out on stage like where the pump up area is yeah or okay. like imagine imagine this is the stage okay yeah. and on the sides there's curtains and also behind these curtains that the, the crowd can't see there's like a different level like an upper level where yeah. people are sitting like behind and they're watching the stage from like up on the stage and as i'm about to walk out to get judged for the night show, which is like the first show in the morning is like you show up the and they judging pre judging. They yeah. really, that's when they really decide yeah. and the night show, all your family members come and they're like, everyone kind of shows out, right? They're a little fuller. Hopefully they didn't over spill over blah, 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 all this shit. And I, and that's when they also say at the night show who wins. Right. Yeah. So as I'm about to walk out, the guy who invited me to that show to come do his show in Texas, he's like, trust me, you'll win. Come do my show. But he want because he knew that I'm gonna be like, look, I'm doing the show in Texas. This is the name of the show, NPC, whatever, blah blah blah, right? Come do the show. He's up here, and I'm about to walk out for like the final appearance before they say who wins, and he's like, number one, like the guy who was owning the show and running the show is like, he looks at me, he's like, like you're gonna win, number one, and I win. So my point is this: when I had nothing to offer and I had no clout to give, I got fucked because someone else had money in someone else's pocket. Over there on that show. Right. And they're like, yeah, you got to ask the judges about what you should do better. Your posing could be better. Like all this shit that they would excuse it with. And then when I realized like, oh, I'm popping now, they're telling me to come do these shows. And before I even show up to the show ever, they say I'm going to win. And then I win. That's wild. So that literally happened to me. So through that experience, I was like, ah, oh, fuck this shit. Because it's not, it's any, any sport that's subjective like that, you can just make shit up. Straight 100%. up. You can be like, well, their posing was kind of off. Period. Like, it's not like I can go and be like, yo, that guy so deadlifted. You think, you, you think Olympia is like that? I think it, I think to a degree, absolutely. Do you think I they think, choose the winner of the Olympia based on who's going to be bringing more absolutely. traffic? Absolutely. 100%. Yeah. Huh. I'm not saying that the person who wins, like, you can't go out there and be like a piece of shit and like look like trash. They're not going to let you right. win. You're not going to show up and win if you, if you, you can't be like a random gym dude and be like, dude, I'm fucking super popping and I'm doing the Olympic. You're not, they're not going to win. Like you have to fit the mold. So like you can't go out there and look like shit. But I do believe that there is definitely a giant side to it that I think though has gotten, has become less and less because of the internet, because of people's ability to say shit like this on platforms and be like, yo, I felt this way. So they had to reel it in and be like, okay, we have to be more like actually, you know, obviously still subjective, but a little more tight knit that we can't just say that guy wins or whatever. Yeah. I could probably win off of my posing alone. Uh, you said that Remember before. I told yeah, you, that. you said that before, you <laughs> fuck. No, but I, I, I'm, listen, this is, this is, it, it is what it is. Like, cause I get it. It's a business at the end of the day. It's not like it's a right. fucking free thing where it's like, yo, everyone's doing this and there's no money involved. There's a ton of money involved in that stuff. So it's like, as a business owner, I'd understand it's like, of course you want the person to win to be the person who's going to like bring the most to your business. Right. But it, it's still it, it. Well, that's why it's hard when it's a sport based on judges and not performance. Point, yeah, not like not like like I said, powerlifting. You did that or you didn't. You got a right white light or a red light. You got the, the basketball on the hoop or you didn't like more points or not like you're they're judging off of like. I'm a judge and I've been a judge and I'm like, this is how I feel about that person's posing, physique, stage presence, all these things that are just kind of fluid, right? Besides right. like, 
you know, there's obviously a line where it's like, if the guy walks in there, he just had a ton of pizza. He's like, all right, that guy's watery. You're not up here. Like we you're can't even, done. Yeah. you're done. We can't even compare you against everyone else. So I get it. It's, it's just one of those sports that is a little bit can be wishy washy. So again, I don't, I don't think it's a hundred percent like so, that. So what's the next life goal? For me, yeah, I want to have kids, man. Really? Yeah, yeah. I could, dude. You'd be a sick dad. <laughs> Thank you. Be a Thank sick you. dad. Yeah, I really want to have kids. And 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 this How old stuff, are you now? Thirty three. Yeah, you got time. Yeah, got but but like this kind of stuff, I enjoy the most. Like this podcast stuff, this form of content, this yeah. medium is, and it's cool because like I'm noticing that this is now the thing that like everyone's doing now. It's like the it's yeah. The, but it's like, I mean, shit, I, I think like everything else, right? The, the, the people who are best at it will eventually continue to just kind of do it and continue to rise to the top, like right. with everything. But this is the best, in my opinion, because like someone could actually watch this. And if you're at this point watching this podcast and you've watched it throughout the whole thing, like you're actually invested in trying to learn about someone or about something to actually be better. Because, dude, think about, think about before the podcast became like really trendy and cool. All content was just like, the, the least amount of attention span possible. It was like less and less. It was like two, like the seconds of videos like that people were. That's it, how it is now kind of. Yeah, but it's, but it's kind of coming back around is what I'm saying. Right. Like the fact that this is becoming more popular and everyone has a podcast all of a sudden because people know they see the trend that people are wanting more of this. And I love that. I don't care that everyone has a podcast. My point is like it became, I remember social media became this point where it was like fucking, two, I only have my attention span is like two seconds. And like the average attention yeah. span of like kids was like fucking two seconds where it's like, if it's not getting me right now, it's, but it's, but you can't learn shit in two seconds nah. you're like straight up. You're just, it's like, just, it's, it's just taking you away from whatever else is going on in your life temporarily. You just keep scrolling. You get sucked into this machine. And then this stuff, if you're watching this is like, you actually want to understand something. Otherwise you wouldn't sit and listen to something for this long. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, absolutely. there's so much more value here in my opinion that someone could actually better their fucking lives with or get some sort of perspective. Like, that's why I love this so much because I knew when I was growing up how much I wanted shit like this and it didn't exist. Like this wasn't when I was fucking 17 years old, there wasn't like what podcast could I listen to? Shit wasn't even a thing. Yeah. You know, that's like true. I wasn't like, damn, oh, I listened to Joe Rogan. It wasn't. So I just love this shit. I think it's dope. So doing more, is talking about life goals, doing more of this kind of stuff is what I'm really, really interested in. So life goal next is kids, baby. Yeah. Want that. Do you care, boy or girl? Nah, I, don't care. I mean, I've always wanted two boys because I grew up with a brother and I always wanted to be the father I didn't have, essentially. Right. So, but uh, I mean, that's what that was my first thought of having kids. And then it's like, I don't give a fuck, dude. I, I, girl, boy, I don't give a shit. It doesn't matter to me. Dang, that's big time. It is, yeah. That's big time. Yeah, you All know, the you ladies know, are going to just come after you right now. I don't know. You didn't, I've been talking about for like, <laughs> for like the last few podcasts. You haven't, uh, you haven't got that bug yet to have kids? You know, it's funny. The this year was the first time because i've always been just like super like odd oh, no 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 kids like i'm afraid of having kids like all this stuff and this was the first year that i was like man having a kid would be sick yeah that, i mean obviously i like i'm not ready for that right now like you yeah. know i have so many things that i want to do before i uh aka you know like actually fall in love with somebody to, of to have a kid but um this happened to me at 26. The same thing. Yeah. Same exact thing you're describing. Because before that, I was like, no, no, fuck. No, I got way too much to do. Yeah. And then I, I but it was, it's weird. Like, I just started thinking about it. I was like, I was like, man, it'd be so sick. Like, yeah, I could have a it. freaking kid. Like, it'd be a beast dad. Like, it'd be so sick. Yeah. Um, and then I kind of got stoked about it. And I was like, okay, that can, that can wait. You know? Yeah. It's going to wait. Yeah. No, I, I mean, you got to be, you got to find the one. You got to find the right. And, I, and I, that's another thing that I think I just, I don't know. I overthink. I just overthink try, like trying to make it perfect. But it's like kind of almost sometimes you I don't know. I guess you can't make everything perfect. I know you can't make everything perfect. Right. But that's always been like my my biggest worry in life is like making the right decision, you know, trying to do what's right. And like for finding the right person or what's right for that person or what's right for me. And it's what's like that right person look like. I mean, someone's got to be like caring, obviously. Some people be like something I see like if I'm gone, could they take care of my kid the way that I would want my kid to be taken care of? You know, so right. defining that, I'm not going to go through the whole list, but yeah, it's someone who's like caring, someone who's loving, someone who's also stern when they need to be stern, like, cause you can't let the kid just fuck off. Right. Yeah. Well, how to... do you, how do you find that stuff out? I feel like for me, I find a lot out about a person by their family. 
like how yeah. their family is. Yeah. Or just getting to know them. Yeah. You know, but totally. you're right. Yeah. Family, you're like a family said, you can see how they interact. You can see like how their family dynamic has been like, cause you know, obviously, obviously that's how you learn, how they learned how to be is based on, you know, their parents yeah. or their, their siblings, whatever. Um, but then also people grow from that and like move past that. And like, cause then they learn from that, that like maybe they have certain things they didn't like. So then it's just being around enough to see that person in enough different situations to see, okay, how do you react when you're mad? How do you react when you're happy? Like, how do you react when you're sad? When yeah. You're frustrated, like getting those. Cause like, obviously with a kid, you're going to be fucking sad. You're going to be frustrated. Sometimes you're going to be happy. You're going to be mad, whatever. Right. How do you react in those situations without a kid? And then how would that, you can kind of get an idea of how they might react with a kid. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's, that's what like, but everything though, in a relationship in general to, to understand someone. He's a dog dad. I'm a dog. I am totally big dog dad. Oh yeah. Three, three, babies. three, three babies. You don't have any dogs. Uh, they're with my mom. Yeah, solid. Can't have them with me right now. Sad. That's I that's I love dogs. Yeah. I'm also a dog. Sorry, I had to He's go. He's my dog. My dog. My dog. <laughs> my dogs are feasting. Oh. You didn't like that one. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what? What? What did you mean by that? Like your like your boys are getting money? What did you mean by that? Yeah, my brothers are feasting right now. I like that. Is that like a fucking thing the kids all these days are saying? I don't know. I've been saying that for like the last like year, I think. I love my brothers are absolutely fe- like my brothers are starving right now. Like, they're just hungry. They're hungry. They're after it. Or the Is that what my you brother mean? my brothers are are starving. Are Could you trying to like, start a thing right now? I'm if this be- is a thing already, then I've never heard this. Really? Yeah. No, my dogs are feasting. Is this a thing that you made up or is this a thing? I that hope you- so. I I mean I don't know. Damn. I've been I, saying it for like a year now. It might pick up. I hope so. Everybody, Probably. my dogs are feasting. Damn. Including you. I like to think so. Are you part of the dog pack? Oh, yeah. What kind of bitches you get? I'm not gonna, we're not going to do it again. We're there not going to do again. it. We're going to end it there. We're going to end it there, I promise. Um, but no, I, I, I appreciate you coming on, man, for real. We're no, not gonna, I appreciate we're you. We're not going to talk me. about the bitches anymore. We're going to end it there. Are we doing audience questions? Oh, fuck. That's right. We got to do. We, so at the end of every episode, we do audience questions where we're going to go through three of the questions. Um, Natalie, how can I ask the questions? You go to askrawtalk at gmail.com and then we'll read your questions. Yep. Are you guys ready? Or go to Instagram. Find the Instagram at getrawtalk. That's the Instagram. Wait, why is this live? Dude, no, this has been live like the whole time. Emails. You're this kidding. Has been live the whole, yeah, dude. This camera's up there. Dude, you're sicko. Oh, shit. You're such a fuck, dude. I love that. Imagine it was live and I just got you dirty with all the girl stuff. I, I think I kept my my composure. You did good, dude. Uh, the play-by-play, uh, 100%, all four quarters. <laughs> you did great. You're a dumbass. <laughs> you did great. Um, no, it's not live. It's we, but we, we basically, people are sending in questions all the time and then we just pick them and then we just randomly select them. Basically. Oh, hell yeah. So go ahead. Give us the first question. All right, so it says, how does one master the art of not being an overthinker and oh. simply living in the moment? Oh, shit. Uh, I might not be the guy to answer that because I overthink a lot of stuff. You know, sometimes I like to think that fucking, you know, uh, I don't know. <laughs> nice, dude. That was insightful, bro. Holy fuck. No. All right, I'll give you guys a better answer. I'll give right, you guys. Please. Okay. How do you master the art of not being an overthinker? Is that the question? And live in the moment. And yes. live in the moment. Okay. The, it's actually the, the answer is within the question, right? Right. Living in the moment, although can be the hardest thing for some people. That's how you master the art of not, of, of like not overthinking straight up because I, I must've, I mean, you guys got to understand this. Number one time doesn't fucking exist. Okay. So we get so caught up in like, we have to do things at a certain time or we need to do things before a certain time or like we need to be a certain way to get a certain thing and we get so caught up in like the future and where we're going to go. And I, and I, and don't get me wrong, man, I've lived my life like this for years and sometimes more so than not. And I can say without a doubt that I've always had the most success in my life. The more I was in the moment, I've always had the best conversations in my life. The more I was in the moment, I've always like felt literally the best. The more I was just like, when, whatever I was doing, I wasn't worried about what I did yesterday or what I was going to do tomorrow. 
or where I was going to be. And, you know, you know, people ask you that dumb question, where do you want to be in five years? Fuck that dumb question. It's stupid. Like, don't get yourself caught up in like the future. Don't get just don't leave yourself caught up in the past. And it's so much easier said than done. I will say that. And I know that's true, but it really just like anything else in life takes practice, like catching yourself when you're like worrying about the past or like thinking about something that, you know, affected you negatively and like keeping it in your present, you know, like let's say, and I do this all the time. Like let's say you're with a girl and it's like, she did some fuck shit and you're like, you're still, you're still making that problem relevant today because like your ego can't let go of it. Like, you have to catch yourself in those moments. Or yeah. even when you're like going forward, you're like, oh man, where am I going to be? And I'm worried about this. Will I have enough money when I'm this age? Will I find the right girl? Or, you know, if I do this, then this might happen. You have to catch yourself like mentally hear those thoughts and be like, all right, hold on a sec. What actually matters now? Because genuinely how you get to the future and how you have a past that you can be like, yo, that shit's dope. I'm glad I did that is by just being here right now. Cause it's truly the only thing that really does exist. Nothing else really exists. Yeah. We just make this shit up based on our ego, based on our emotions. And it doesn't matter. Like if you really want something amazing in your life, then like take the steps. You have to take those steps right now. And like I said, it comes down to catching yourself and it's a habitual thing where you're like, okay, you notice it. And the more you notice it and the more you catch yourself, the less and less it happens, the less and less you allow yourself to do it. And understanding that at times, no matter what, no matter how hard you try, you're going to have moments that are like you're caught up in the past or you're caught up in the future. But truly to get to those like big places in your life, you'll notice you'll get the fastest. You'll get there. The f- you'll get the furthest and the fastest when you're like, I'm in it. I'm in this right now. Cause that's how you genuinely enjoy a moment. You make the most out of it. And like, you're actually going to fucking grow from it. Yeah. So I think <clears throat> something that I've learned actually from my acting classes has, has been, um, with the, especially with the overthinking part is pausing and really being honest with yourself and realizing that you're overthinking. And once you realize that and accept that that's happening and saying, I'm overthinking right now, how can I get out of this? Um, Take a breather and just analyze what's going on in your head. Not, Not overthinking the overthinking, but just saying like, okay, what's going on around me? I'm in this podcast. And how does this make me feel? And you just, you, you go through that. It takes practice. It takes some time, but it makes you see where you're at in the here and now. And it makes you present because you get to feel like this is making me feel, I I feel comfortable right now. I'm talking to my, my big bro right here. And, and, you know, I'm analyzing what's going on in the present. And if I feel anxious, uh, or I'm overthinking, then I, and I realize that, then I get to know, I get to target that and see where do I need to be? I need to feel comfortable. I need to feel like I need to be in the present. So that's going to engage me to ask more questions. It's going to engage me to, to reach out to someone and, uh, ask you questions to look around, to be present, to be in the here and now. Yeah. I mean, it's what it's all about. It's just, yeah. we complicate the fuck out of these things, but it's a good question. Cause it, I think a lot of people deal with and struggle with being in the present. It's, but it's a very normal thing. So accepting that number one, and then taking inventory, like you said, of like where you're at without being so concerned with where you want to go or where you were, that will allow you to be here. But it's a, it's a, like anything else, it's a repetition. Like you have to like, just like training, like you want to get better at something, you work on it. You want to be better yeah. at this. You, you spend time f- trying to be better at it. So it's all about being aware of it. But yeah, let's hit the next question. It says, hey, Brad and guest, I've been having a hard time staying consistent with going to the gym. I do at home workouts mainly, but I want to start seeing true results. Do you have any advice when it comes to getting yourself in the gym every day and staying consistent? Uh, I would say I would say pick a goal that is obviously gym related and and like show up for that. If you're like, okay, I want to get a. 315 pound bench press or a 225 pound bench press. Like you're going to have to show up to the gym to do that unless you have like this kind of equipment at home. Uh, but pick a goal. That's the thing that will keep you kind of like consistent and coming back that if you've decided, decided that I'm going to get this thing, then like it's going to keep you coming back. But it's easier to go like, OK. Oh, OK, I want to lose weight. That's too broad. You know, or I want to get stronger. It's too broad. Like pick something and, and go towards it. 
that's the way better way to do this. Like you're like, okay, I want to have a better squat. I want to have a better deadlift, like whatever's going to keep you coming back. So it's almost like not necessarily a game, but fuck it. Yeah. A game. Like I love fucking games because I like the achievement process, but you can't just have the open ended vague. Like I want to get stronger. And you're like, your brain is not deciding what exactly that means to you. So you have to define it first and then, and then do the things that help you move towards it. But if you don't define it first and you're just like willy nilly in the gym fucking off. So it's about picking a goal. Yeah. Picking a goal. hundred percent. Um, also knowing that the beginning is the hardest part. Hard as fuck. Yeah. Just starting is, is the hardest part. Very important. Um, and knowing that and getting over that hurdle, cause it's all about just showing up as long as you show up every day or the six times, four times, three times a week that you want to train showing up and making that a routine and part of your life and blocking out that time of the day for training, then, you know, it's going it, to, it just, it's a momentum thing. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like fucking, it's crazy. Cause everything is the same, man. In our yeah. Lives. It's all, every, all your achievements are the same kind of thing. Like if it, if it matters enough to you, you're going to fucking figure it out. You're going to give it the time that it needs. It's just that first hurdle. Yeah. Cause you're right. It, it, people get into like a goal. Like I want to get 225 and like, it's so far away or 315. It's so far away. And then like they start and like, they don't see progress for a month. So they're like, fuck it. But like, that's how it works. You have to keep going. And eventually you're like, Oh, now I like, you kind of do this for it to, to go up. Like yeah. you kind of have this dip. My for goal time was, to, was go to like do this for a little while. Bounce. Yeah. It's more of like an elbow, pull your elbow in thing. Is that it? Yeah. If you just think about pulling your elbows in, it bounces the titties. Right. Right. Yeah. Girls yeah. love that. Let's talk about pussy. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> We're going to go to the next question. We're oh, gonna, my favorite. Yeah. The thing that you <laughs> love talking about. Uh, go ahead. Next one. So this person says, hey, Brad and guest, I want to keep it simple and ask who is truly your hero and why? Hmm. Damn. Bradley Martin, but only when he's benching three girls at the same time. <laughs> Dude, I don't ah, fuck. I'm trying to think. I don't know if I have like a fucking hero, man. Oh, oh sorry. Uh, yeah. Joseph. Yeah. It, yes. It's cool. It's yes. Cool. You know, it's funny. Uh, it's that time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Dude, it's fucking, it actually, it actually is kind of weird. Like your dad is kind of a hero of mine. That's a weird thing to, to admit to you. No, it's okay. Yeah. It's fair. Right. I feel like I, it's I, very, it's pretty valid. Yeah. It's actually pretty common too. <laughs> you and like every other one. <laughs> no, it's, that was why you asked me this question. I was like, fuck, that's like a weird guess to get it with. Um, yeah, uh, he's one of them. Yeah. Weird. <laughs> yeah. Arnold. Ron, I mean, these are guys, Ronnie, like I liked what Ronnie was able to do with like to have the, the fucking insane physique and the insane strength. Um, but yeah, I mean, beyond that, like I think once I started getting into all this shit myself, the bodybuilding, I don't know. I, I just kind of like I started just focusing on myself, you know, trying to like we talked about earlier about, you know, not worried about, you know, the footsteps, whatever the fuck, just like trying to be the best version of yourself. Like I kind of became my own hero. Yeah. So because I, I became genuinely which is crazy what i wanted like i'll have kids come up to me and be like yo i appreciate the things you said or the videos you made and it's like it's i didn't like do it to try to get that i just was like talking about shit and then it became that you know we talked about the social media like i didn't yeah. try to be an influencer like it was just that was who i was and that was what i was doing and then people were like this shit's cool and i guess i kind of became what i always wanted which was like to be honest at a point in my life was just to have like a solid father figure someone who was like yo i believe in you and I became right. that person or I tried to give that advice because like I searched for it. I looked for it and I kind of became my own hero, which is cool as fuck. But, you know, at the start of it, I'm not going to lie yet. Like your father, um, Ronnie Coleman, Jay Cutler, those are people that I was like, yo, I love, I love in this space. And that was the only thing I cared about at the time. These were the people that I was like, I want to be like that. Yeah. yeah. Even your dad, it technically gave me the idea to lift the girls because I remember I was watching pump and iron and I told the story before. Where, but he was, you know, that scene where he has that thing and he's going like, this? oh, yeah. And he has the girl on his he shoulders. He has a girl. On his I remember yeah. seeing that and be like, oh, shit, I'm going to start lifting girls and videos. And I, I think it'll do well. And it fucking blew up. Yeah. But it was because I was watching. I swear to God, I was watching Pump and Iron. And I've seen it like 10 times at this point, but I watched it again. And I was I remember just seeing it click. And I was like, oh, I'm going to put girls in my videos and lift them. Right. Because I thought when I saw that scene, I was like, that shit's cool. And that's like, I want I want to be fucking cool straight up. And that's yeah. what, like, that's why I did it. 
<laughs> it's so crazy. I told this story before without you ever. I don't think I ever. I don't know if I told you that, but I told another podcast. Like that's where the idea actually came from. I remember. No way. That's sick. I remember that moment. So, yeah. Shout out your dad. He's dope. Cool. Uh, hero wise, yeah. I don't know. I don't know about like someone that's like my hero. I've never. Th- I've never looked at someone and said like that guy's my hero or like. Um, that was the question, right? Yeah. Yeah. Who's your hero? Yeah. I've never really looked at someone as like my hero. There's been plenty of people that I've looked up to. I've looked up to you. I've looked up to my dad. I've looked up to, you know, um, many actors, Jack Nicholson, like all these legendary actors, like I've, I've looked up to, but I think, uh, especially right now, it's become a, a point to not just look up to certain people, but to surround myself with people that I admire. And um, that started coming within the last year, like hanging out with you has been huge because who you surround yourself with is like kind of who you become in a, sure. in a way. Um, and so like hanging out with you has been awesome. Like I, I text Bradley all the time, like for little tips here and there. And he's like, you know, big brother status. I love yeah. it. Uh, hanging out with, Jason Strauss, like hanging out with um, with Fisher, I, be, I, I became friends with uh, with Paul Fisher, the DJ, like yeah. he's he's a freaking legend. He's, you know, inspired me in so many ways to like keep going on my DJ path and and like, you know, uh, other other actors like like uh, Matthew McConaughey and, and and yeah, like Jack Nicholson. These are all guys that I look up to and hopefully I can hang out with them and you know, pick their brains. But lately it's, it's been more of like focusing on keeping people around me that are constantly inspiring me and keeping me in this like loop of being productive and, and reaching my goals and staying motivated and everyone's pushing each other. And that's the main thing is I really focus on keeping my friend group as people that just push me Yeah, that are constantly like not saying that like, get people around you that are constantly kissing your ass because you need people that are there to say like, that's, this is a retard, like, this is a stupid idea. You need people to challenge you. To challenge you to, to say this is dumb, like this is wrong. And, uh, you know, this is not going to work, but that's on you to, to take that or to keep pushing yourself even more. Yeah. So it's easy to, I think it's, it's hard for a lot of people. It's easy to get caught up with people um, in your circle that are really good friends of yours. And then you almost don't realize that like, they're like, not that they're haters, but once you start kind of like outwardly going towards like your goals, like sometimes they stop, they stop aligning with like what you want. Cause they're like, nah, that's stupid. Or that's kind of demotivating. I think it's important for people to know that at those, at those points in your life, like you, you have to not just say, Hey, fuck you, fuck off. We're not friends anymore. But I would say like, you have to address that and be like, Hey, this is really important to me if you're not going to be like a positive influence in my life, like, I don't know how much longer we'd be. It's, this is really hard for people to do. See, That's, that's something that's been coming, uh, really relevant to me recently. Also, it's important is, uh, you know, I still hang out with a lot of my college buddies or guys that I've hung out with, like, you know, just over the past couple I hang years. out with zero people from my college or high school or anything. I don't even talk to anyone. Yeah, well, it's 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 weird now because certain friends that I've had that we were so close just like don't understand what I'm doing or like, you know, they talk shit about it or they're like, oh, why are you posting so much? Like, why are you why do you care about these things? And I'm like, well, like, why why can't you just like support me or like yeah. be in my corner? I mean, like like we were saying earlier, man, a lot of the times it comes down to people who are just not comfortable with what they're doing in their life. So it's easier to be like you see someone going towards what they want. And it's like not that you want to just shit on them, but it's an insecurity and like it genuinely comes from the place of almost like, damn, I wish I was doing more of the things I want to do. So like, cause uh, imagine this, imagine someone who's like super successful going after what they love. They're not turning around and looking at someone going after what they love me. Like, Oh, that's just kind of, I don't know. That's stupid. Like, why are you doing that? Yeah. That would never happen. Wait, I heard that. I heard that quote, the someone that's more successful than you in something will never talk shit about you doing that thing. Never. Something like that. Well, I mean, it's true. I mean, imagine, imagine you being super motivated to be an actor, right? 
Yeah. And going after what you love being like, yo, and then you look at someone who's on his way coming up and you're like, you're fucking stupid. Like, why are you doing that? Like, why would you do that? No one would ever do that. Who's right. actually trying to do it. So like the person or the friends, whatever, it's like, it's an insecurity of themselves of like, I genuinely believe when it comes down to them feeling like they're not doing enough in their own life to go towards what they really care about. So it's easier, just like hate comments on the internet. It's easier to go, Oh, you're fucking stupid. What's your shit dumb? Like that's stupid. Cause it's easier. Like you don't have to worry about yourself. You're just fucking talking shit or focus on someone else's in a negative light. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's just, you're directing your energy here instead of like something that's actually going to do good for you in your life. That's the easy way out because it's harder to be like, well, what do I really care about? Cause like, even if we had two completely different things that like we cared about, if I saw you succeeding at and trying to be better and trying to learn and like loving it, enjoying it. If I turned to you and was like, you're like, why are you doing that dude? That makes no sense. No one who yeah. ever would call like be a friend, whatever. It just doesn't add up. Right. It's like I could be over here doing water polo and be like, I want to be like a professional fucking, I don't even know if it's professional water polo shit, but it doesn't matter. I want to be an Olympic swimmer. Right. Right. I'm not going to turn and be like, Oh man, like acting like, what are you doing, dude? It's cause I'm too busy focused on also what I want to do. And I'd be like, yo, that's sick. I'm doing this. Like, you know, come fucking catch some laps with me. Like, Maybe I'll come support you here. Like, you're never going to turn and be like, that's fucking Let stupid. Let me just point out that nobody's perfect, and we've all kind of done this. Uh, nah, fuck like, that friend of yours. Straight up. Brad, Bradley <laughs> Bradley said, why are you going to do DJing? What the what the hell are you doing? I know. <laughs> oh, dude, yeah. I mean, I asked you that, but I wasn't like, it's stupid. Don't do no, it. No, I know. I'm just playing. I was like, why are you not fucking being Mr. Olympia fucking, uh, you know, nine times? I'm I was posing just, alone. I was just fucking with you. <laughs> I would. I ne I never told you down though. I never say you shouldn't. No, do no, no, no. Yeah, I just give you shit. Cause I you know like, I'm actually I'm actually DJing in Vegas for the first time in like two weeks. Where at? Uh, Marquee. Oh shit! Really? Oh yeah. Oh, that's dope. Well, it's the library at the Marquee, but yeah. Well, whatever, dude. Just still sick. Just say the Marquee. You know. The mar that's why I just said it. <laughs> the Marquee. Yeah. <laughs> oh God, we gotta end it there. I love Hell you, yeah. man. Freaking um, love you. Uh, you gotta come back when you're a famous actor. Come back when you're. Don't forget me. I okay. I have a show. That's, you can promo whatever you want. I, I have a know. show that's coming out. In a, it's August right now. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, in about a month. Watch out. Really? Just so I can't talk about it. What platform is it on? Can you say that? Is I don't on, know. Is it on streaming or is I'm it just not even going to risk it. Just know. Okay. Just remember my name. And oh, okay. just right. freaking this show is you're going to you're going to you're going to freaking freak out like you're going to go nuts. Can you tell me off camera more because like, no, I can't really. I can't. I signed an NDA. That's so stupid. NDAs don't mean shit in California. <laughs> FYI. She told me that she hasn't told him. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh. You made it about girls. Yo, again. Yo. We gotta end this shit, dude. <laughs> I love you, man. Thank you for coming on, everyone. Um, I appreciate the love. Uh, thank you, bro. For real. We got to dap up. Um, subscribe to YouTube. If you're not, we got iTunes. We got Spotify. Drop a review. Drop a like. Drop a comment. I love you guys. We're fucking out of here. Yo, hit, uh, hit, hit the follow button. Smash the subscribe yeah, button. Run all that shit up. Can you <laughs> fucking do that for real, please? Thank you. We're out. So you've done a podcast before. you got to keep consistent with yours. I know. Yeah. Don't, I be, a, don't be a loser. Man. Freaking losers out why, here. Why, why'd you do it? Just kind of hard to be consistent? No, it was just, yeah, it was hard to uh, to get people on the same schedule. And then, like, I don't know. I was just, I, like, I'm doing a thousand different things at the same time. So it's yeah. like, it's like I only have certain slots throughout the week that yeah. I'm free. Yeah, people yeah. can't make it. They can't do it. Makes sense. That's it. Let's get these photos.